I'm going to carry your hydraulics. Coming okay. down with you. Valve packs are off. Coming down easy. Coming down easy. Delta 26. Come on down. So we're inside of the bottom now, and we're just going to let the ROV pilots take a little time to settle out, um, get our ship ready to move so that we can start moving. And before we um, start with the actual dive, we will take a water sample here. Exactly. All right. So nice this will be our first uh, water sample that will be used Auto for EDNA bottom. analysis. So this will allow us okay, to, on bottom. Um, after filtering this water and using some molecular methods, to they want a water sample, look let's into confirm. DNA traces that may exist in the water from you good to go? the animals in the area. Yeah, you good to go? Okay, science, this is pilot. Watchly. Go ahead, pilot. Yeah, we've settled in on bottom. We're all set up and ready to go. Did I hear somebody wanted a water sample? We would like a water sample. Okay. Understood. Co-pilot's going to take Niskin number one. Survey, you ready back there? Ready. Survey, resetting now. All right. Firing in three, two, one. Confirm visual. Snap. Hydraulic secure, valve pack secure. Yep. First Niskin. Flex. All right. All right, Todd, I got you at four or five. Okay, I'm just playing with the uh, blue view here. It's a very featureless bottom, it seems. Yep. I can range that in a little bit if you want. Sure. It's at 80 right now. Yeah. I'll get you to 40. Okay, now. I think uh, pilots are ready for first move. Copy that. I'll call it in. So uh, nine seven is what I have. Nine seven. Copy. Should a thirty meter move? Twenty meters. Get started. Uh, um, yeah, maybe twenty. There's all right. There's nothing out there. Let me take a look at the sediment while we're waiting. Sure. Settling in. Yeah, you're calling in 20 or 30, I think it's, it's fine. All right, I'll, I'll get started with the called 20. You. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, watch lead now. Um, I was just wondering if we could get a snap zoom on the sediment when we have a chance. Stand by. Oh, I thought you called nav, okay. All right, okay. Bridge, now. Okay, I'd like rolling. to request a ship move. Go ahead, video. This is pretty straight below us. Yeah, Range yeah, as close two zero as meters. I that we would have Bearing a bit of zero nine seven dive. degrees. Mm -hmm. Speed oh, zero yeah, decibel two knots. But actually, it's a very biogenic sediment. Say, are those yes. pteropod shells? Yes, pteropod shells. And that's a brittle Lots star right in the middle. Yes, beautiful. Brittle star there. Good copy, Bridge. Very unusual arms with those swelling. Pan around or maybe go uh, towards yes, the uh, whitish stuff. I gotta turn you up, Roland. You're quiet. Check, check. One, two. Yeah, it's better. And it seems that these. Um, you want to maybe uh, head up towards the clear sort of pockets, or the whiter um, stuff? Probably formed by yep. um, the current. Stay partial the off. Mm -hmm. yep. ahead. It did look like it had sort yeah. of uh, ripple marks. Yes, exactly. Okay, this very is dense. the whiter color stuff here. Yeah. What do you think the darker color stuff yeah, is? I wonder. And if I'm not mistaken, what I remember the mm. pilots and video folks telling us is that it's 18 times zoom. So okay. we're looking at things that are really, 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 really little. Small. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we can see actually also some small gastropod shells. Yeah, I thought I saw a gastropod there, yes, shell, but yeah. I didn't want to. Yeah. I was like, hmm, I'll let the biologist say, yeah, tell yeah. me that. 
I saw already a couple of them. They're not so abundant as the pteropod shells, yeah. obviously, but yeah, there's actually one there. Oh, yep. Huh? So we'll peruse the sediments of the seafloor yeah. while we're getting set up to start moving our way Lasers. to... Um, Lasers on. Our ridge. Oh, thank you. And the Look at those two objects lasers coming to that, are, that were just put on onto the screen are 10 centimeters apart. apart. And so you can take a look to see just how little mm -hmm. the things we're looking at are. Yeah. Yeah. What is that? That's also a pair of watch. Oh, it is? Yeah. Sorry, don't yeah, know my terabyte shells. But they're all <laughs> they're all pretty much empty. So normally these uh, would be in the water column. So these are the sea butterflies and sea or sea angels, um, and they normally live in the water column. Um, these are pelagic mollusks. Yeah, what's our total uh, uh, transect mollus. distance mm -hmm. for the day? Um, video is clear. And Thank of you, course, video. then when they die, their shells it's just fall to the, to the sea floor. Okay. It's a waypoint so forming these 600 very dense, meters um, and uh, what's our vertical um, substrate I think I heard 40 degrees once we get moving yeah I mean yeah. that's a lot of them right it there is, it is look at that 1700 or so yeah so that's only 200 200 over 600 roughly that sounds about right yep so the hope is that as we move up this slope we move out of this sedimented plane of pteropods and yeah. hopefully into it's some... It's pretty flat here. We should just keep, this, keep the ship surfaces. moves going for a little while. Copy that. Unless we we'll start find out. hitting interesting features. Copy that. We have about uh, another... That first move is still underway. Another 10 meters or so left. Swimming fish or shrimp. I'll keep them coming. Center screen. I'll bump it up to 30 meters On for the next sediment. one as well. Copy. We'll settle the, let that get in the center and settle in, rolling. Something over to the left, maybe the same thing. I'll go center. Oh, we're seeing there are frost fish. Try not actually. to scare them away. Where? I don't see a fish. There. Oh, right, right there in, in the middle. Right in the center. Oh, look at that. I was looking at the Sirius view to see what else we could see. Want to go partial? Right now, all I see distance. is sediment. Mm. Right, because he might scamper. Well, one of our Oops. fish experts is in the chat room right now, so maybe he can tell us what kind of fish that is. It has this very long, wavy fin all along the body side. And, and actually, this one seems to have this rather augmented uh, nostril. That is a cutthroat eel. There. Cutthroat eel. I feel like we okay, see those yeah. a lot on the seafloor. Go ahead, Bridge. Thank you, Bridge. So even the biologists in our chat room were saying, wow, that's a lot of pteropods. Yeah. I agree. That's a lot of pteropods. Can we let him go? Okay, we'll let him go. I'm going to drift off to the right. Look at these beautiful ripple patterns. Yeah. Coming back around in 097. Should I just go ahead and call in another move then, pilot? Yeah, I think we should keep it moving. All right. There's nothing on sonar. Bridge, Nav. Like to request another ship move. Range three zero meters, bearing zero nine seven degrees, speed zero decimal two knots. You've got a little bit tight if you want. I've got Good copy, Rich. Oh, they do form like this sort of blank. They're blanketing the seafloor. Yeah. Here, this, uh, what is that in the center? That. T2 feels a little bit light, even with 32% yeah, Z-wise. No, some areas is so dense, it Still even looks light. like we're looking yeah. at rocks, but mm -hmm. we're not. Yeah, no. It's quite interesting. Dense water. I, I hesitate to yeah. say just sediment because there, I'm sure there's a yeah. sedimentologist out there who's going to say it's not just sediment. No. <laughs> 
watch right. lead now. I'm on the move now. Go so ahead, now. Copy. I'm just wondering how how important is it that we make it to uh, waypoint two? So red um, object I'm not left sure it's and center. That we make it. What do you, you see? Know, totally left to waypoint two, but I do think we want to get out of this okay. um, go for as it? fast as we can. Okay. All right. That that's what we're pursuing. We just Ooh. wanted to understand the relative priority. You know, if things change. Yep, appreciate it. All right, thank you. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, that's a really so is unusual this a sea urchin. Yeah, it, it is a sea urchin. It's quite an unusual one as well. That is really it's, cool. Yeah, it's so, it's it's so like, its legs are so yeah, little and light. spiny. Yeah, exactly. And appear so to be thin. wrong sized on one side. And it's <laughs> to be, yeah, and it seems to be sort of lopsided. Yeah, it does. Do you think that's the purpose, though, that it has, like, some legs that are little and some legs that are long? Yeah, perhaps to, to allow it to move, um, you know, um, through the seafloor and have more flexibility. It's very interesting because, actually, they ev it even well, looks like that that some of the legs there. are quite it's flexible, tiny, which tiny. is rather unusual for um, for sea urchins. You pull out for all the legs. Wow. That's really impressive. Is that just a sea urchin? Is that thing on top yeah, of it also a sea urchin? Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering or about that. Um, like part of it? Oh, that did not come out well, but you know what I mean. Yeah, like that thing sure. that's on top that looks like a hat, is that part of the Lasers. body structure? Yeah, it should, it should be part of the body structure, but uh, typically that would be actually facing the sediment. You want to try to get closer to it or so want to move on? I can try. I've got position. time. Yeah, you got a little You're full wide. Bump in a that is bit. not a big sea urchin. <laughs> no. It seemed like when, <laughs> when yeah. it zoomed in, but it's probably just maybe two centimeters across. So we'll spines, try to spines excluded, of yeah. course. Exactly. We'll try also to take a look at it while we're yeah. moving on. Get a little oh closer. Yeah. A little better light. Oh, that's great. Oh. Pretty soft sediment, huh? Yeah, and you can see clearly yeah. the insertion points there of the spines um, on so. the test of the urchin. Um, what do you see? And what's the test? Um, what's yeah, that's, that's the, the outer the, the body, outer body yeah, the, the shell of it. Um, we don't quite see there the tube feet there. Well, now it's so a So that is probably, yeah. yeah. Very cool. Yeah, it seemed to have Ready? stopped because of us. <laughs> exactly. It's like, um, I was heading in that direction, and now I'm not anymore. All right, I'm going to clear your fog draw. Yep. Fog draw. Pushing out. So it looks like there's some sorting going on from the sponge left. From the, oh, you know, coral again, we're left. starting to see. I think our first sponges and corals there, also oh. to the lower left. Um, there. We're we still out in front of Sirius. Oh, so yeah. We have there, time yeah. to look. One sort if of you dead want. center, yeah. middle, and the bottom. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Remember, I said we weren't as close between the skids as you on. can. Okay. <laughs> Pro promise, we're just gonna have a quick. We'll just take a, a quick, quick look. look. Yeah. A quick look at those guys. Unless they're very special. Yeah, so this is coming into view. It uh, yep. seems to be a glass Kay. sponge. I still can't see. Yes, so that's, that's most certainly an Oh, look at how beautiful yeah, that it's is. It's beautiful, and I think it might be carrying again the solenoid worms, the scale worms 30. that we've seen in uh, a previous dive um, on this expedition. So this is a neoplectalid sponge. Yep. It's a glass, it's uh, one species within um, the glass sponge the class, exactly in Elida. Um, and you can see it has this very intricate skeleton, which is made of silica that forms this sort of cage. It's like a tube. It has a, a um, all, of, all of these the speculars protruding yep. also the from, the, from the surface of the sponge. And usually, um, some some organisms, some species, use it as a as a glass house, sort of. Um, so in this specific case, we see, and we found that also in in a previous dive. Um, these scale Full worms screen. that usually Go ahead. enter the sponges a larval stages or when they're juveniles um, and then they just sort of um, look at the they become too forever, big right? yeah they just uh, become too big the to next thing would look straight at the yeah. thing at so the bottom sort of in see inside there. what was behind that other what was behind okay. the sponge there was something else that when we zoomed out again that looked sort of okay, tall and skinny. The coral. okay 
And this is probably, actually, this one might be Oplectella Superera, which is known from more or less the... the Thank you, Bridge. ...the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Mm -hmm. Is that a coral? Oh, no, that is, yes, that, so that is a coral, and that looks to me um, like a sea pen. Yep, sea pen and a Yeah. And this one I'm not sure, actually, we've seen in the previous dives. I don't recollect that, having seen it. So you can see here very clearly the... Yeah, the tentacles, um, bridge, yeah. With those, uh, like to request a ship move. So what kind of coral Range is that? Range three so zero meters, bearing zero so nine seven degrees, and full speed, speed zero decimal two knots. Yeah, and this one seems to be Look sort of rooted to the sea to, to the base. sediment. Okay, and then we'll have to go. Okay, yeah. clear. Pilot's ready to go. And Mike Vecchione, who's one of the Both scientists who's in our chat mm -hmm. room right now, um, mm -hmm. mentioned, and I was wondering the same thing, the black, the little black things that we're seeing sort mm -hmm. of mixed in with them, the white, they're still pteropods, which is interesting. Oh, um, so maybe with some sort of uh, do they coating, coating on them? Yeah. Maybe there. Yeah. Just Another snap it on the way by. Go ahead. Not a whole lot of biodiversity right now that we're seeing. Yeah. Still the idea flat. is hopefully as we move up the slope we will see more. Clear. Go ahead. Personally, I'd like to see some rocks. <laughs> as well as the biology, which I'm very of excited course. about. Very excited about. Another one of those cutthroat eels. Right there, center screen. And we're having Pushing out unless we get stopped by something to see. on the chat room saying that this oh may be yeah. actually Funiculina, the sea five. pen. Copy. It's just a real gentle slope coming up. Yep. Coming up just a little bit with you. So the idea is we're going to try to make a little bit of tracks across this um, somewhat flat seafloor, and the hope is that That's we'll uh, start zero. moving up a ridge soon. So we're seeing, okay. um, you know, continual ripple marks. Um, a ver you know, every so often we see what looks like a sea pen or a sponge, but um, and a lot of terrapod shells. So the idea is to try to move along this section fairly quickly like so that we can hopefully move. find areas Hard that have higher depth biodiversity. Where do you see that? Um, just the uh, ripple line just looks so much more exposures. defined. Mm. It's same reflectivity on the mm -hmm. sonars. Okay. Though. So there goes a sponge out of sight. I do you want to miss yeah. the sponge? Yeah, I she think, looked I down. Think, I think it was another Euplectelli. Yeah. Yeah. I was just taking notes here of some of these observations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, several people in the chat room agree that the pteropods well, may have some Well, now we're picking floating. up a little bit okay. of texture on the blue view. Yeah, just off to your a little bit. Yeah, it matches the change in color. There's another urchin. Yep. Hi, this is Watchley. Go ahead. Um, would now be a good time for introductions of the front row and the rest of the rooms? Sure. Go Guys, ahead. are you ready for introductions? So we're going to take a moment to introduce the folks that are uh, in the front row who are making all of this happen and those who are um, also making sure the video and um, highlights are being passed out to us and able to see everything. Okay. Good morning. This is Todd Gregory uh, piloting Deep Discover this morning. Hailing from Rhode Island. This is Andrew O'Brien on ROV NAV, uh, also from Rhode Island. And sitting to the pilot's right, this is Chris Wright, sitting co pilot this morning, also hailing from Rhode Island. And sitting to my right, this is Roland Bryan, the video engineer. And in our back row. Uh, this is Anna Sagatov, 
I am a videographer and I am from Virginia. I am Joana Xavier and I'm biology lead here um, and I'm coming from Portugal, from the north of Portugal, Matosinhas. And you're a sponge biologist, and, and there's I'm a sponge, sponge on the screen. Should exactly. I take a zoom? <laughs> Do you want to talk yeah, about that? Yeah, we should talk. Mm -hmm. Sam and I can introduce drone. ourselves yeah. later. Yeah, we can take a zoom in. Mm -hmm. Yes, understood. Coming up 30%. Thank you, pilots. Not actually seeing a difference much when those lights come on. Yeah, I think it might be a little bit. And just out. to say, this is a great team. Shrimp in the mm -hmm. lower mm -hmm. Is that a shrimp? That looks to like right a small shrimp, yes, actually. Yeah. And that sponge is oh, quite that's sedimented. Yes. Ooh. It's is that a hard substrate, coating, though. Or is that a rock that it's sitting on? I think it's sitting on a rock. Oh, it's yes. sitting on a rock. Yeah. Good. We finally found a rock, people. It's yeah. great. First rock of the <laughs> of the dive. <laughs> Ooh, that shrimp is kind of scary looking. Yeah. I'm not into it's it. Prob it's probably guarding the sponge. It's guarding the sponge. Yeah, probably. Yeah, he's protecting you know? it. Yeah. He doesn't want us anywhere <laughs> full near it. Sponge. Yeah. He knows I, what our little grabbers do. I am not into you. that. Yeah, and you can see those long, very long spicules that protrude from the from the sponge surface, yeah. and where it Go actually ahead, is accumulating a lot of sediment as Thank well. Thank you, Bridge. Yeah. You got time. Talk. And again, we can see that there's something living inside the sponge. Yeah, I can't pilots, quite. Uh, do you want me to call it in? Go to the top. I yeah, can't it's quite make it out there. If okay. it would be again um, one or two of those um, polynoid to scale worms. Going up to the top. Bridge, now. Like to request Although a this ship one move. does look somewhat Range different from the previous three zero one. meters, bearing zero nine seven degrees, speed zero zero two lasers degrees. on. And it's actually also interesting to see these marks on the seafloor. These um, the more, uh, you know, makes these little um, okay. hills, right. yeah, yeah, like burrows. So they, these must be burrows of some Kay. sort. Tell yeah, me when so you're clear. Some kind of rolling. Yeah. disturbance clear. happening Lights yeah. clear. from the benthic so trace, animals. Yeah, yeah like trace marks. Bugs. And you're talking about all the little white spots. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this almost seem to like they have um, almost a very regular pattern of distribution. I would have just said they're all over. <laughs> Oh, look, another rock. <laughs> Yay. Oh, and you see, it's very interesting because whenever you see a rock, then you'll see a sponge or two. <laughs> look at this briefly. Maybe a little snap, yeah. Roland, and then we got to we'll push out. Let's have a, a look quick at this. View. Yeah. Quick view, and then we're going to move on. Because Ooh, actually, this is a very interesting rock because it has several sponges. There's many In sponges. Fact, yes. It has an encrusting so sponge? Yeah. See, it I has finally a few, figured that it out. It has a few encrusting sponges. It has a few... Mm -hmm. Look like small squat lobsters, like oh, these, squat gal lobsters. These, yes, these galathides. I do like squat lobsters. Not a fan of the shrimp, and but I am a fan of the squat and lobster. And for the sponges, actually, has quite a bit of diversity as well. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, There's like five different types of sponges on this, at least, yes, right? Yes, and a crinoid there as well at the back. This actually looks like the base of a bamboo coral. Uh, which that is probably has died. The one that looks very unhappy? Yes. Yeah. Um, but you see also... You, These are all very sedimented, yeah. though. I think the large globular sponge that Do you we see there at the left with, mm -hmm. the, with a very clear uh, opening uh, might yep. be um, a geodia um, sponge, uh, so within the tetractinellid. Uh, is is the thing to its left that sort of bumpy, is that a different sponge? It is a different sponge. Oh. So that is a lamellar sponge. Um, and I'm actually a little bit in doubt whether that could They're also symmetrical. be actually a, a geodia um, right, yeah. or get it um, okay, one of those rock sponges that we've seen mm. in one previous dive. Looking straight down at you. Straight down. I'm pushing out. So it's very interesting to see that whenever there is a rock, there will be a lot of diversity. So these for these these are sort of islands. Right. They need that um, hard substrate yeah, exactly, to really to thrive, right? Yeah, exactly. Some more of this uh, sea pens, uh, umbelula. I'm sorry, say that again. Umbelula. Umbelula. Yes. And finishing up the introductions because we didn't do, we stopped to look at rocks yes. and now sponges. To you. I'm Deb Glickson. I'm with the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine. I'm the geology lead on this expedition. Um, on this leg of the expedition, and sitting next to me is Sam Candio. Yep, I'm Sam Candio. I work for NOAA Ocean Exploration, and I'm a mapping lead and expedition coordinator. Thank 
you all for the introductions. It's always nice to know who we're sitting next to. I mean, we actually do know who we're sitting next to, but. <laughs> it looks like we're starting to see some hard substrate that's not totally covered by sediment. And it seems to have like a crevice there underneath. Mm -hmm. Like it makes like this plateau. Yeah, I wonder what that round thing is that's sort of heading off screen right now on the bottom left. It's okay, we're going to keep moving. I bet it's a sponge. Oh, yeah. I see there are several sponges. Mm -hmm. Extra lights off. Fog's clear. Yeah, this particular rock looks sort of platy, like it looks mm -hmm. you know, sort of straight, and then there's really nothing underneath it at the moment. Light bottle temp 3 4. Looks good. Nice and cool. So you're right, the chat room is confirming that what you saw a couple of minutes ago was a bam base of a bamboo yeah. coral. Nice cold water down there. Yeah, 2C. I think we're having there another one of those glass sponges. Understood. Possibly again, um, Euplectella. John, for these glass sponges, yeah. do they need a rock to settle on? They need a hard substrate, or are they able to it anchor directly yeah. into the sand? So it depends on the species. So some species will have this um, sort of roots that they, they can root themselves to soft sediment. Okay. Uh, others will um, use also spicules or a basal attachment disc to attach to rocky substrate. So it depends very much on, this, on the species. Very cool. Yeah. And it's very interesting because some of the species have uh, these basal uh, spicules that are actually called anchors, and they just really look like an anchor. And they can anchor themselves also to, to rocky surfaces, just like, you know, th those um, um, like anchors. You yeah, bridge. like when you're yeah. going, you're going uh, climbing, like very similar. I'll yeah. call another move in, pilots. Yeah, it still looks clear. Okay, sounds good now. Bridge, I'd like to request a ship yeah. move. I think it's an ophiuroid there. Range Probably three not zero the meters. Same that yeah. we've seen earlier on. Bearing zero nine seven degrees. Speed zero decimal two knots. Oops, a little bit so of. So this a is an echinoderm. Um, Quick look at the uh, star. A cousin to starfish. Yeah, so this looks like an um, an ophiuroid with very long arms, very nice central uh, disc. Yeah, it's really pretty. When we finish with this, if we could just rotate diagonal up we right, need there's sort of a here hole in pattern. The chat room to tell <laughs> yeah. us more about all of these okay. echinoderms. Go ahead. He's a real expert. Just upper right. Oh, oh yeah. and there to the right, you see that hexagonal pattern oh, we see on that? the sediment? Oh, yeah. That's actually called Paleodiction. So this is also, it's again, it's one of those trace um, marks that we haven't been able to to figure out um, what's the organ is making those trace marks. Um, it is being called paleodiction because it resembles a lot some trace marks that have that have been uh, that are in the fossil record. Um, but to date, uh, we haven't been able to figure out who, who's, co who's uh, pr producing these marks. Yes, on they're the really cool, though. Yes. And they're very Video's little. Clear. Lasers like that's cross. That's really small, right? Because you look at the size of the uh, pteropod shells. Yeah. Well, that's very interesting. So very different from, yeah, so these are yeah, probably five centimeters across. Not even, yeah. Very different from the trace okay, marks you saw up. earlier in this, uh, in this campaign. A couple little that tickles on the view. Of, um, you can go holes see what the they are. Mm -hmm. yep. But those were also yeah, only like two to four centimeters across, weren't they? Um, the ones we saw earlier. One yeah. Shadow yeah. There. yeah, there were. Straight ahead. That's it right there. Small glass sponge. There's another yeah, one. Yeah. They look like tailed sponges. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it looks like. I'm hopeful we can move upslope and 
hopefully upslope there's a little bit more rock exposure, a little less sediment. Otherwise, I'm going to explain, explain whenever we see a rock like this. Look, a rock. <laughs> With a sponge on it. Yes, so here we have a different type of sponge. So this is a polymastia sponge. So it's in a, a different uh, order and family. Um, and you can see, we call it the urchin sponge we'll because it, right. it looks like resembles, a sea urchin. Yeah, it resembles a bit of a, a sea urchin. Carolina. And you can see it has these very long papillae. So the ones oh that yeah. are, yeah. So, oh, these are actually That's really, really weird neat. looking. Yes, these are really neat, actually. It looks like a little elephant. So you can see these. <laughs> it does. It, I mean, it's really weird looking. That does not look like a lot of the sponges we've so, seen before. Yeah. So you can see these very long papillae that have an opening at the end. So these are the excellent papillae. So it means that's where the uh, water exits mm -hmm. the sponge. Whereas the other spiky ones that you see, th they are not, they don't have an opening at, the, at, the, at their tip. Okay. Those are the inland papillae. So those ones is where, through which um, the water comes into the sponge. So then it circulates through the sponge body uh, throughout a, um, um, a network of canals, of water canals. Um, and then from which, and it's from this water that the sponge will remove oxygen and the nutrients it needs to leave. Um, and then the water um, is collected down. on these uh, chambers and transported uh, outside. And what kind of sponge did you say this was? So this is a polymastia. And might be, there are several species actually, but this may be actually polymastia corticata. Full screen. It's a species that is known um, from, uh, from deeper areas, uh, lower bay fill or upper, um, or the lower portion of Lasers. the upper bay fill. Right. So is there a reason why some of its, um, some of the tubes that are expelling, are like that? some are straight and some are Video pointed? Okay, up. there's a little I would coral I right there. I wouldn't think right. there is uh, like a very specific reason. Okay. Um, Look, there's oh, a little and coral. That's an, and that's an very small. hydro coral. Very small hydro coral. <coughs> we can see here and we see the polyps are all directed towards one side of the... This is probably Cryptelia, if I'm not wrong. This We have seen this in a previous dive um, on the Azores Plateau. Okay, time to go, guys. Okay. Like yes, and it is here from Rock. the University of Tel Aviv, who's an expert on corals, on um, oh, yeah. is confirming that this is Cryptelia, the hydrocoral. Cool. I'll follow you back over. Okay, I'll, I'll just go. drive over it as I go. Yep. Oh, you're missing a gigantic sponge. There's another Ooh. sponge. Oh, gotta and we really going. are seeing That's them associated yeah. with the rock. So anywhere there's hard substrate, yeah. there's more life. At least one sponge. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Bridge. All right. I'm Thank you, Bridge. Up on nine seven. Understood. Understood. We're starting to see traces of the rocks that mm. are underneath the sediment. Yeah, we have the here again top. another glass sponge. So they seem to be not not so uncommon here in this region. A couple of them out there. I'm going to push out. You're still looking down. Yep. Um, and we're seeing here oh a, fish. a fish. I think it's different climbing the hill here. So Definitely getting yeah. a little steeper. You yep. don't think it's still yeah, in eel though? The ship's stationary right now. Do you want to get caught up first? Light. Maybe just for a minute or two. Okay. okay. There's a chance it they're going to see something. They're going to want to linger on. Fish, but I'm not sure fish. if that's the one we were looking at. A couple of rocks. Halosaur. Halosaur is a. We're starting yes. to see some what look like the salt blocks. Yeah. I mean, they might be salt. It's hard to know until we pick them up. I got you. Twenty five. So what we're trying to do is track down where these rocks are coming from. Or coming bottom of the screen. 
where, uh, where it's loaded. right near the bottom right now. Center. Take it down. I think it's uh, an enemy. Two of them. Are those two little tiny little stalks? Yep. yep. Okay. So we're going to zoom in on a couple Go of ahead. little corals, I think, that are just making their oh. way. No, those aren't no, corals, are they? They're yeah, these um, are these um, tube anemones. Tube anemones. They seem, yes, yeah, Solcerian tharians. Mm -hmm. And they're called like that because they do form these uh, mm -hmm. tubes that protrude from the mm -hmm. um, from the sediment. Very cool. And they will um, they will retract their um, their tentacles when anything such is done. So they will feed on small prey, small crustaceans. Okay, so lasers. They are suspension feeders. Um, oh yeah, there are two of them there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And video is clear. Okay. Yeah, it's just a, as you said, this um, like area definitely has some bioturbation. Yeah, yeah I gotta get does. back over there anyway. So mm -hmm. just sidle you can over. See from those lighter colored circles that yeah. we're passing over. Mm -hmm. Might let them go and push out a little bit. Remains to to be discovered what's causing them. Perhaps some sort of worm or some crustacean that makes these burrows. What is this here that keeps... What is that, do you know? I don't. By your feet? It's a footrest. Uh, yeah, that thing you got your feet on now yeah. is a footrest. It just flopped forward. Is that okay? Yeah. I okay, think it's, it's fine. supposed to come down if you wanted to, to come all the way down. Oh, I see. Yeah, I, I like it quite a bit. I kind of like it up. But okay. Special projects division? Yep. Nice. That was a large special. We continue so to see what do you think about uh, that ship move now? Mm -hmm. We've been stationary for a couple minutes. Yeah. Pilot's good. Okay. Gotcha. Four or five. Sort of the bridge, occasional yeah. rock thrown in for mm -hmm. fun. <laughs> <laughs> so they re these rocks really serve like small island hot spots. Yeah. Right. Bridge. Yeah. Like to request a ship move. Range three zero meters, bearing zero nine seven degrees. Speed zero decimal two knots. And at least for sponges, um, usually when they find like a suitable substrate, they will attach to it. There's a whip off the left side of that rock. They, produce, they will bridge. make sure that the larvae will remain within a relatively Stand close by. distance to the to the parent. So they have what they're called phylopatric <laughs> behavior, mm -hmm. um, which means that probably when you see like several such sponges on a rock, they will be closely related. Mm -hmm. Will be like a sponge family. Don't they eventually have a problem though if they continue to reproduce yes, on a you know in a course. fixed spot? Yes, what happens? Of course. So the so the larvae still are uh, they are uh, pelagic, but they okay. are um, they are non planktotrophic which means that they cannot feed. So they are sort of limited into in terms of the distance that they can that they can um, um, disperse. Got it. Oh, and here now we have actually we have a um, uh, black coral, a whip coral. Probably like a stichopathus. Crab or lobster there. That's mm -hmm. my favorite um, name, stichopathus. Stichopathus. Looks like a stick. And Let's you can see this central axis, which is uh, a yeah. bit coiled. Um, and while you're thinking you about see. the other stuff that's behind yeah, it, I'll mention I'm it looks like there's a manganese crust on this rock. So if you look at, see how bumpy the texture is on the mm -hmm, rock? Mm -hmm. um, my guess is if, if that were something we were to collect, not that we're going to, but if it were something mm -hmm. we collected, um, this would probably have a manganese coating on it because you can just see how kind of bumpy and lumpy the outside of the rock is. Is that a dead crustacean behind it? I'm not sure it's no, actually I can dead, see it's it's but it's not oh, it moving. Moving it's a little bit. It's very sedimented though. Yes. Yeah. It it's very, look very it's, healthy. It's, you know, it's very camouflaged with the sediment there, and to the left we see again um, a geodia sponge here, much smaller. This one, mm -hmm. 
we will need to really examine the, the skeleton to be able to say uh, the species. You got okay. time. Yeah. I got you at four or five. Copy. That's interesting. That I mean, that rock definitely has what looks like a manganese coating, which isn't surprising because there's a few more out there in front of you. It may just be a little old. Maybe a little bit more over here. Starboard. I'm just checking some notes here as to which species that. Um, <coughs> that black coral could be. <coughs> or perhaps someone in the chat room can also weigh in there. See a few more little rocks. Oh, you see first what might be an outcrop. Boy, it is heavily sedimented. Oh, Whoa, there it goes. It's a shrimp. So shrimp. This looks like the nematocarcinos we've seen also in a previous dive. They're very fast, they have this very long antenna, and they have this beautiful bright red color. Yes, they have a nice contrast yeah. to the, uh, the rocks behind them. Yeah. So this may be the start of this reach that we're going to ascend. No, I think it might just be the part that isn't as covered with okay. sediment. <laughs> it does look like it all has a manganese crust on it, though. Mm -hmm. Oh, but look behind it. Starting to see what looks like some talus. Basically broken up pieces of rock. And you can see how angular those are compared to the ones with the manganese crust on the mm -hmm. front. So. Those look like they might be a little bit fresher. Maybe not. It's sort of hard to tell as we're zooming in towards them. But that angular blocky look that we're seeing mm -hmm. is, is indicative of, it, it tends to be indicative of um, some of the basalts that we see. They cool and then they break along these angular fracture planes. White stick up or right. And I see there to the right again one of these uh, large lamellar uh, sponges. Um, would be great if we can have a, a look at it. Watch lead, are you looking for the spun that's coming into yes, center right exactly. now? Exactly. Okay, stand by. Go ahead, Bridge. Okay, Roland. Thank you, Bridge. Start coming in. Oh, yes. And it is, I think this is actually a, um, a Geodia. Um, are we in a position to collect this? Of course. I think we are. Yeah, the ship just stopped. Yeah, you might get a little past me, but we're... No, nah, you've got plenty of time. I'm looking at you, 3-7. Tilt up. Stand by. Okay. Are we going to try to pluck this from the rock surface, or are we going to try to slurp this? Uh, no, not slurping, because it will be it will be quite dense. Um, right. Okay. So we, we can possibly break a piece of it and leave the okay. remainder. I don't I can't quite up. figure How out what. Uh, yeah, exactly. I can't quite figure out the size of it now. What but do you think? Lasers. Yeah, and you can clearly see the oscules there. Yeah, it's really uh, cool. Yeah. So there's the laser, so it's about 10 centimeters. About 10 centimeters. Um, yeah. 
too bad it's not sitting on a lone rock by itself. Clear? Yeah, we could then okay. collect the rock by itself. there, can I slide out the drawer? Uh, maybe. Why don't you I just leave it stowed for now? It, if you open it, it might push us at, aft a little bit. So. Yep. Okay, arms coming live. Um, because this reminds me of Georgia Pachider Mazda. Um, Checking for uh, wrist rotation. The Azores region, but. You want more light on this, Roland? Oh, yeah, it's much smaller no. than oh, it no. looks. You want more light, Todd? Uh, are these are these those yeah, rock sponges? Bit, please. <laughs> no, so this one, this one, this one is not actually. So it won't be as hard as a, as a rock sponge, I but it will. Go with the small fingers on the bottom. Compared yeah. to other sponges, it will be somewhat go partial okay. roll, please. hard. Um, and that's because it has like an um, an ectosome, so that's the the um, superficial layer. Four, is um, four. I think I'm going to go to three. With a very dense, no, um, it's HDT. a very dense layer of a specific type of spicule. Maybe uh, um, that gives 30, 40 percent zoom on HD2. That's good. 30. So, Joanna, why are we collecting this sponge? So, we'll sponge? put this in a bio box, right, guys? Um, yeah. Something we've seen a lot of, or we think it's rare, um, or all of them yeah. Are open. On one on one hand, it's not a very common sponge, and it's also one of the one of the species that um, that has been identified as a priority uh, under the Aspire program. So, maybe looking into connectivity patterns. Angle. So it would be it will be yeah, very interesting to see how it relates to other. Say again, Andy. Um, I was just saying, uh, D2 is starting to get off of CPHD. Oh, uh, understood. Come down. Thank you. Yep. So we could select their um, connectivity study. Yes. Okay. Yeah, there it comes. So the chat room is asking yeah. if you oh, um, collected yeah. this Beautiful. type of sponge nice. before. Okay, I don't think you did. Video. No, not here. Okay. And what Draw type of sponge out. is this? So this and is a Gaolia. Port side. J right, G sure yeah, like that. G E O D I A. Yeah. Oh, Geodia. Port side. Geodia. Okay. Yeah. Your fingers are opening, closing. Yeah, I know. I'm holding it gently. Hmm. All right, drawers out. That's your that's toe. That's okay, that's okay. Okay. And to port. Still your toe. All right, George, fully out. You're sliding port. back. Invert bio box. So this will, sir, I was actually now checking here, um, also on the work for database, and this right will there. certainly be, if it is that species, Gyodia pachydermata, then it will certainly be the southernmost record of the species uh, uh, for on the North Atlantic. Nice job. Track and draw. Okay. Great. Thank you, Pilot. You're welcome. And Pilot, just to confirm, that was Port Inbird? Port Inner. Yep. Okay. All clear? All clear. All right. I got it. Sure. Here. All right, I'm over top of you, so you want to go ahead and push out. Copy. That's me looking down at your 9 zero. Okay, I'll push out. Nice collection. Thanks. You did smush it. Nice. nice grab. Yeah, I didn't go grip lock. I think it would have kind of yeah. crushed, it would have like it pried it apart. And it probably would have stuck in your tips of your jaws as mm -hmm. well. And trying to get it off. It's been tough. Very delicate.
several more sponges now here mm -hmm. in view. It's interesting because it does seem that there are at least a few of these Gaudia species, and that's not very surprising because they do typically occur at these um, depths. Mm -hmm. um, Is it interesting that we see sponges but not as many corals? I mean, we're certainly seeing more sponges than we are corals right now. Is yeah, there a reason for that? That's, that's interesting. Is that a sea pen or a coral? Let's have a look. I think it's a different coral lower oh, level. We're actually, we can't right see. Bridge, yeah. Oh, yeah. it's so transparent, actually. Like to request um, a ship move? There's two things so on that graph. Yes, there are. Three it looks like a black coral again. Yes, but it's oh, very in it. seven degrees. Lights are still on. Oh, is that a squat lobster inside of it? It's a lobster. Yes, a squat lobster. Ah, and you can see this, uh, so you can see here why it is called a black coral. It's because that main axis, the that skeleton bridge. is uh, super dark. Um, and you can see then these different branches um, living from that central axis on several directions. And then the small polyps, very transparent here in this case. Very cool. <laughs> really nice. The spot lobster hanging on for dear life and right now. And we're having here the folks from the chat uh, saying that this may be Parantipathus. Slight tilt um, down. According to Tina. Parantipathus. Oh, and you can see Let's also... Look, uh, that item between the layers. Something else. Yeah, there, mm -hmm. to, there to the right. Oh, this is interesting. This is an, an a sea anemone which is growing on a sponge. Oh. I don't know if it's be behind the sponge or if it's actually sitting on it. Looks like it's sitting on it. It does look like it's sitting on yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> That's not very common. And then there's a curl just to the right. I'm going to rock, and right? Exactly. And just behind it to the right, there's again one of these hydrocorals, Cryptelia. And this and that's coming, yeah, and, the, and yeah, and this what's coming into oh, view now right. is actually the basal Remnant portion of, of one of those exactinalid sponges. Yeah, so, so it's there's dead. A pl so it's dead. So yeah. it's the remaining um, a part of the skeleton. Hmm, interesting. Yeah. So it's and still it's serving really as a place yeah, exactly. for other the brittle star. Clear, I'm yep. Push out. Clear. So actually, sponges and especially these sponges that have very intricate uh, skeletons will serve as a, as a substrate and as an habitat for mm -hmm. a variety of other organisms, even after they are dead. Yeah, it serves as its own yes, hard substrate exactly. for others to live on. Yeah. Depending on the species, some species will leave behind, you know, the long silica stalks. Mm -hmm. Others, um, in other cases, the the the, um, the skeleton will um, disaggregate and will form what we call a spicule mat on the sediment, mm -hmm. which of course brings a lot of structure uh, to the sediment itself. And it has actually been shown the, that the diversity of organisms living on the spicule mats is fourfold of that found just in the se in sediment, wow. regular sandy sediment. Yeah. About how big can these spicule mats be? Oh, they can form very they can form very large patches oh. and they can be up to half a meter thick oh wow yeah depending in the depending in the area Kyle this is watch lead go ahead watch lead when you find yourself in a position where we might want to be able to sample a rock and we can find one that's small enough and we're not moving um, could you give me a shout? Sure. How much do we have left in that move, Navigator? I'm just looking at these rocks straight in front of us right now. They look possibly uh, grabbable. Another 12 meters. I can call it an easy stop. Okay. Do you want me to do that? Uh, Deb, do you like these, or should we keep moving? Um, I do like these, but I'm also okay with us keeping moving. I don't want to okay. stop us from our right, trajectory well, forward. We'll and just you have keep some moving. more to your starboard here, so... All right, holler if you see something that mm -hmm. strikes your fancy. Thank you. You have plenty to choose from. Yeah. So we're continuing our slow upward climb.
Ooh, now we're getting into no. much more angular looking rocks. And now we're seeing here what seems to be also a red coral. Should we take yeah, this I don't know what that is. Roll uh, it. Yep. Settle I know. In. I know enough we not to ask for that rock. It looks to me like a small paragorgia, so this the uh, bubble, bubble gum, gum coral. coral. Mm -hmm. uh, but it would have, it would be a juvenile, probably. Uh, it's not very branched yet. Yeah, but it does look so. Oh yeah, it definitely looks like a yeah, paragorgia. Yeah. It's first paragorgia mm -hmm. of our dive. Well, and what I learned on one of our previous dives mm -hmm. was that these come Ooh, not only in this bubblegum color, but also in white. In white, yeah. Yep. What's, what's oh, and crawling that, and on that it? Is, that is an amphipod climb, climbing on it. <laughs> I turned off the fogs to see if it cleared up the view. There's a little bit of sediment coming off my port toe. And it's interesting because we always seem it's to see... trying to escape yeah. us. <laughs> Go ahead, Bridge. Up Not certain, but it, it's, you, it's up, moving at yeah. a very fast clip. Yeah, no, up, up it goes. <laughs> okay. And a bunch of rocks. Yep. I wonder what's going to happen when it hits the top. <laughs> yeah, Nasako, you're in the... Um, in the room clear. is commenting that... Okay. Um, it is indeed a paragorgid. Co-pilot's all a sponge just up to the right. We'll go We'll go see. And then uh, looks like there's a whole field of rocks that way oh, as well. Oh, look at those rocks. We could grab any of them if there's time. Oh. Yeah, we're stopped, pilot. It's probably a good time to find a rock. Fantastic. Let's go have a look at the sponge and see if there's a rock right next to it. Or maybe a rock that it's on. Ooh, oh, look at that. Is that a sponge? A, yes, that is a sponge. That is a glass sponge as well. And you can see here it has this very long uh, stalk attaching itself to the rock. So, And this is um, coming to my yeah, head. Uh, do you want to we, we, we saw things that looked there, like huh? this, but yeah, they were directly on the right. rocks before. We collected some of them. They looked like little, you know, they, they looked like that, but they were on the rock. Yeah, Are so those a related like species? Like uh, no, they're actually I'm different. Oh, so well, that's good to know. Yeah, Please. so there is another sponge that has <laughs> relatively the same appearance. Mm -hmm. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. It is a beautiful I'm one. Sorry, Rowan, catch that is this surprising? It is not surprising, but it shows that the species can occur much further south than we expected. So oh. we, know, we know this species um, also from all the way up in the Arctic. Mm -hmm. Um, we know it occurs um, in the Bring northern portion now. of Tilting the uh, mid-Atlantic Ridge, so between the Reykjanes Ridge and Tell the Azores. Um, Hold there. We hadn't seen it at these latitudes before. Let's try Very with 30% cool. light. Understood. So this is a beautiful finding. Yeah, it's not really helping. Maybe take the time to get a little beauty shot. Yes, in. please. <laughs> full screen. Full screen. Uh, full screen at the top. And you can see at the end of these bulbous yeah, um, areas the oscule, yeah. so through which the and lots of these little yeah, pores through which the, the water goes in, and then it has this deep central Let's go to the top uh, yeah. cavity. Oh, the way the top oh, actually, part. you can see very clearly. That is beautiful. That, that, that can, that can oh wow! That network of water canals. Mm -hmm. um, That's really beautiful. So, Joanna, they're zoomed in sort of at the top of that mm -hmm. central cavity. Yeah. Why are there like little, like a little, little holes? Yeah, a little fringe. What yeah, is it that? It looks like there's a little fringe of spicules. A lot of, actually, quite a number of sponges have this. Um, it's not yet certain why they would have this, this fringe, like but we think that somehow yeah. it's a way to also um, you, keep track some, some of the um, sediment. Mm -hmm. um, which would, of right. course, then prevent the We're sponge stopped. from We've clogging. We've been for a few minutes now, so. Full screen, Full including screen. stock. Oh, it's a beautiful specimen, this one. I wonder if there's something living it's inside of it. The light's up to 75%. See, but 75, understood. Gorgeous. All right, video is clear. Okay, pilot's good to go. Okay, watch lead. 
take your pick. There's quite an assortment oh. here on the right. Oh, these look beautiful. I would take pretty much any of these. I know that we are aiming for perhaps a little smaller. Hey, Todd, I'm just going to swap out real quick. Levi's going to guide you through the rock. Copy that, co-pilot. Okay. Um, well, these are all 10 to 15 centimeters, which is pretty small. Okay, great. And maybe one that's slightly bigger. You know, I'd like one that's angular. Angular, okay. Which most of these look like as well. And now uh, are we moving or are we stopped? Stopped. Stop, stop co-pilot. Pink item above lasers. Uh, I don't see it rolling. Uh, above the sea star, diagonal left lasers. Maybe a rusty spot on the rock. That's what it is. Is that rock? It's big. quite quite large. That's yeah. a big one. That's a big rock. <laughs> what about yeah. the one just above lasers right now? Um, yeah, that would be great. Or the one above that. Okay, let me settle in. Good. Okay. Are we okay with starboard rock box on one of these? Are you asking me? Um, I Both guess so. Both are free. <laughs> Both are free. I'm fine with it. <laughs> Okay. Those Hydraulics look great. Are Hydraulics up. are up. Ready to go. Copy. Thank you. Follow me with Mini. All right. Uh. A little, little fog. Just a little fog here. Bring the grip force up. Six. How's the one just above lasers? Is everybody happy with the size and angularity? Yes. Or is there a better one? Nope. Okay. And I'm sure we're going to have some bonus biology in there. Hopefully not. I mean, <laughs> no, just a joke. Of course, we would like to have biology. <laughs> that was a joke. Ooh. Oh. It's encrusted to this oh. set up It's not floor. loose. It should be loose. It's interesting. It's not terribly loose. It may be cemented it is, uh, to its pals. Cemented, yeah. Hmm. What well, about the one that is in the upper right-hand corner where we are now? Okay. Um, that looks by it like it's by itself. Uh. Or, or hmm. any of the ones you're passing over right now? We were thinking the one further to the upper right. It's in between your toes. Okay. What? A, which one did I just try to grab? That one. That one. Yep. That's the one I tried to grab. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it wasn't happy, huh? Mm, no. Did not seem to want yeah. to leave the floor. <laughs> so you're happy with any of these? Yeah. Okay. Oh. It's like a grabber machine Very in an arcade. Much. Exactly. Some all of them cemented. are rigged. Wow. Interesting. Very well, look at they're moving the, the ROV. Yeah. yeah I wasn't expecting that. No, it around. really looked like they were just laying down Look, there. Any of these, you think? How about more up close and personal here? Yeah, maybe that one. They're a little I think those smaller. are a little far away for their yeah, arms, so they're looking okay, further yeah. in. Those are pretty small. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are too small. But maybe they'll pop free easier. These really should not be in place. Oh, wow. But mm. They they're do old. not want to leave the sea. Oh, no, this one, this one is moving <laughs> at least. Is it moving oh, or are we no. moving? I saw a wiggle. Yeah, me too, but. <laughs> yeah, what's it? Oh, yeah, oh, there, there we go. Iceberg. It's like a loose status. tooth. Yeah. Wow. Oh, it oh, is. Very it nice. And it does look like a okay, tooth. Nice. Look at that. <laughs> and settling if we could back get down, a quick, oh. when you have a chance, get a, a quick picture, you know. Stand by. D2 settled and safe. Looks like your right. Yeah, it looks like your right toe is down right here. Okay. It's a small little guy, but we'll take it, right? Yes. Yes, we will. And Deb, I think I heard you say earlier, we're looking video? for the angular ones because that's characteristic of basalt. Well, that's my guess. I could be completely wrong. Um, these also look like they have a manganese coating. But um, what I'm hopeful is that we're getting something that with the, because of the angularity, maybe it's something that is a little bit more fresh than some of the other newer. ones that are completely coated. And not as weathered. That is my hope. Although, Can we bring a starboard wing inboard? Yes, please. So if you're clear to do that, I'll drop it in. Okay, right. video, come wide. There's your basket. There's my basket.
Yeah, that other one looked like it should have plucked right off, but yeah. that's how it goes. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Starboard for Okay. I mean, it may not be basalt. That's one of the things that's kind of interesting about it. We had hoped to see some exposures of um, deeper rocks that were not necessarily basalts. We were hoping to see some plutonic rocks like gabbros. The problem is, is that from here, you really can't tell which one is which. So once we get it aboard, we might be able to uh, learn a little bit more about it. But thank you, pilots, for an effortless looking rock we'll sample. Back. You're welcome. We're going to push out and we'll get the ship moving. Excellent. So we're going to continue to move up um, this ridge, and we're starting. In. It looks like we're really going to start to uh, see a lot yeah, more relief very soon. Enough. Sure. Um, that we've gone from sort of the much more gently sloping area right. to bridge, yeah. an area that um, should be a little bit I'd steeper like to coming up. A ship move. Range yeah, three definitely zero looks like meters. That. And even the the data we collected with the sonars yesterday, the mapping data Speed revealed ridges that the the previous data, which I believe was the good stuff was from the early 1980s um, that we didn't even know was there and mm -hmm. before we, we got there. So hopefully as we go up this steeper slope, we'll see some more exposed rocks for you, Deb. I hope so. But we are seeing much more as we, we move closer. And one of the reasons that we're interested in this area is that um, we are diving on what's called an inside corner high. And that's an area where there is low angle faulting um, right at that corner of the ridge and the transform. And it's an area where sometimes there are exposures of rocks that are uh, deeper within the earth. So we could see um, gabbros, we might even be able to see peridotites, um, and so this is the reason that we chose this spot, is that there are exposures that you don't normally see um, on the surface at other parts of the Mid-Ocean Ridge. So it's kind of like being able to get a cross-section of the Earth without digging? Exactly, getting a little bit deeper into the Earth than you would normally get to see. Very cool. And these inside corner highs have been known for a really long time since, uh, you know, since I think before the early 80s. But one of the papers that um, I was looking at this morning was saying that the eastern ridge transform intersection um, at the cane fracture zone, so the, the other side of the, the transform fault that we're at, is one of the first places that these inside corner highs was actually um, discussed and described. So, oh, wow. yeah, it's funny because there haven't been very many, if at all, dives in this area. But the eastern side has had um, some more scientific sampling. It would be interesting to make the comparisons. Mm -hmm. I bet our sampling methods have improved a little bit <laughs> since the late 80s. I would guess that a lot of those early samples from the early 80s were probably dredges where they basically mm. dragged, you know, along the seafloor to collect rocks. Um, and while that was great to get a collection of things that you could, you know, look at, it wasn't necessarily good for understanding where they were in place. Um, and it disturbs the seafloor, as we Thank know. You. Yeah, and that's actually kind of something that we discussed during the midwater dive, too, three that zero. seeing okay. something in situ, it's a little, little different with here, rocks yeah. than it is with gelatinous um, organisms. Well, oh, yes, of course. <laughs> <and tell laughs> to zoom in on you don't always get the same picture of what's going yeah, on. So. But yet, I would argue that's true even for rocks. That, you know, one of the things that we are always looking for is understanding the in uh, right, situ, understanding the where they look like when they're in the place, oh, okay. not just where they are once they Take have rolled it. down a slope. You know, that's, um, we want to make sure that we yeah. are trying to it's understand the small. larger context in which anything is collected, not just um, the rocks, the gelatinous organisms, the benthic organisms. And speaking of benthic I've organisms, we're seeing <laughs> something's coming there into yeah. view. Okay. Couldn't quite make it if it was an hydrocoral. Um, but we've seen a number of other sponges now along the way. A um, couple of them seem to be, again, Geodia. Off screen, right? Different it, species. It's either another one of those sponges or it's a sea star. It's 
see the one I'm referring. I think you're headed towards it. I don't, know, I don't see it. What do you it's see? It's coming center. I think it's a sponge now. Just right at center. Another sponge. We're still doing zero nine seven. Andy. That's right, co pilot. Yeah, I'm going to come over to 97 tower. I like this. It looks nice. So you think all of those will be cemented, all of these? I'm surprised that the first yeah. ones were cemented, to be perfectly Ma honest. I wonder too. if that right. manganese That's crust is kind of holding them together. I was, I was very mm -hmm. surprised. I would have thought that all of these would have been loose. Loose. Yeah, that any of these that you touched would have been loose. So it was very surprising to me that they were not loose. And in fact, really not loose. <laughs> Comes a good sample of her left. Light on the rock. Okay. Oh yeah. So this is again um, one of these hydro corals of the within the genus Cryptelia. And kind it of seems on edge. to have some sort of mollusk on its surface, or a nudibranch of some sort. Go ahead, Bridge. Here we get see actually the kind of bridge. push over. And I think with the no, angle, we couldn't yeah. really see yeah, the no. rest of it. Yeah. And it's Another move, pilot. Doing a good job of camouflaging yeah, itself so. if we can't mm -hmm. see it with that 18 yeah. time zoom. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm wondering what these black sticks on the sand. Oh, is that again one of those tracks uh, of holes there? I Look, did not I see wonder, it. I wonder if it is. Oh, so panning to the far right? Yeah, to the right. Is this again one of those bridge? Yeah. I'm not sure what that is. It doesn't look no, the same doesn't as the other one. It, it is awfully straight, though. Yeah, Range. it does not have Three the holes. Zero, does yeah, it no, it doesn't. Very partial on No mysterious holes on the no, seafloor for not, you. Not on this one. That mo looks more like something was dragging itself yeah, along the seafloor. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, it's different. What are all these little stick-like things? Yeah, though? that's what I was wondering if uh, if these could be remains of. No, they look more like black corals. Actually, these look like fragments of black coral skeleton. Would these be in place, or would these have these have been blown in, you know, yeah, or sort of come in? Yeah, we don't know. We haven't. I mean, we've seen a couple of black corals now on, the, on this dive, but, but not a lot. Not, but not a okay, lot. Well, let's go mm -hmm. wide. So, hmm. Wow, look at this seascape, Deb. Beautiful. It is beautiful, you're right. <laughs> I feel like perhaps you were in jest, but I think it looks fantastic. <laughs> it is, and, and actually, I'm going to point out the sponges for you. I, I agree, see the sponges. I agree. <laughs> By the end of this, I will be a sponge expert, and Joanna will be able to identify any a, black rock on the seafloor. A phallus and... Um, what was it? The others? The rocks? The d yes, the different types of rocks. So um, we could be looking at basalts. We well, could be looking yeah. at gabbros. gabbros. Um, we were looking at those volcanic plastic landslide deposits on a previous dive um, that were quite interesting up in the Azores Plateau. And these all still, I think, have a manganese coating on them. It'll be interesting to see when we bring them up. But all of these look like they have this manganese crust, mm -hmm. um, at least at very first glance. Fresh basalts don't have that bumpy texture that these all appear to have. And really heavy manganese crusts can even look like they're sort of droopy. Droopy. 
droopy mm -hmm. crust. It's, <laughs> if, they're heavy, if it's a heavy enough crust, it sort of encrusts everything around it and and can really lead to some very interesting Maybe tilt looking up and give us a side um, to side view that, just to show the you slope. Know, you wouldn't expect to see. Ooh. Oh, and that's, oh my. This looks like oh it my. continues. Wow. Look at that. Here you can get a like a better slope, perspective of the slope we're looking at. Sometimes as we're moving ahead, it's hard to tell. Taller mm -hmm. in the distance. And there is that. But we can see from. Is camera. that a fish or is that just a? No, it's just a weird shadow. Never mind, no fish. But we can see in camera too, actually. Mm -hmm. So again, some more sponges there coming into view. Mm -hmm. um, is that a coral yeah, that's sticking out on the side? Nope, that's another. No, is that another sponge? Yeah, what there, is that? there are two. There are two sponges there. What's off to the left, though? Uh, I wouldn't be able to say from this distance. A snap on white left of sponges. Two sponges, a sponge behind it, something to the left. Okay. But you see also there, oh yeah, oh. there. Is that another sponge? Uh, <coughs> that looks like another sponge, yeah. yes. Actually, right. that. And while we're looking at that sponge, yeah. you can see that bumpy texture okay. on the uh -huh. rocks that right. is probably right. indicative right. of that's that manganese coating. Yeah, that sponge good. actually okay. could be um, one small uh it reminds me a bit of the of some rock sponges but they're it's an it has an unusual shape mm -hmm. for a rock sponge but you can see at the surface these canals through which the water flows in the sponge in and outside Video of the sponge clear. yep okay Co and again we can see right here white. and again out, here we ahead. can see these yep. um yeah these black sticks in between the mm -hmm. rock crevices so it really makes me wonder whether in the past, there were more black corals uh, actually mm -hmm. um, inhabiting these rocks. Or if we keep moving up slope, what we uh, might see. We will see. probably find them, Whip yeah. Left of center. Uh, center. Didn't we say that the other day, though, and we never. And we didn't. Yeah, exactly. And we were Remember? At coral, yeah, there was a coral lot. rubble. Exactly. What's this? So here's again one of these whip, whip corals. corals. Yeah, the possibly Stichopatis. Um, perhaps if we can have a zoom in. You say a snap one. zoom? Yeah, yep. snap zoom. Quick yeah. Quick zoom. We may have a crinoid on top. Uh, it doesn't seem very healthy though. This one, I wonder. Okay, go ahead. Looks a little bit on the. Uh, uh no, it's actually it's not. This is not a coral. This is an hydrozoan. Uh, oh. But looks like it is. It is yeah on top of an axis, which I don't think would be of the hydrozoan itself. So it looks like there are just several colonies. So those are um, inhabiting yeah, an old ske yes. uh, skeleton? Yeah, or that's, what I, that's what it looks like. Thank you, pilot. You can see the node there. Okay, Roland. Oh, yeah. So actually, Go that ahead, looks Rich. like it's um, a skeleton of a bamboo you, coral hmm. because we could see one of those uh, darker nodes um, typical of those, of those bamboo corals. That's very cool. Notice the rocks are getting bigger. Oh, they are. And they're getting or a little more angular. Or at least lots more variability. Mm -hmm. more <laughs> That's true. Pilots. And I think this is one of those barrel sponges that oh we actually gosh. saw on our uh, last uh, dive of Formigas, these very large barrel yeah. sponge. Yeah, we'll that one. wasn't the Heliclona, was it? Yeah, that was shout. the Heliclona. Oh, look at Mac me. I'm going to be a sponge expert you are by the end of this. a sponge expert. <laughs> That was a joke. Not going to be a though, expert. <laughs> even though this th this one does not well, have, have that um, there. Go ahead oscular. Mm -hmm. um, I can get you light rolling oh. if you want. Oh, look at oh that God. crustacean. It's, it's actually carrying also a tiny sponge on its back. Oh, is yeah. Oh, it is. <laughs> Wait, that's a camouflage. Is, yeah. Well, is it meant to be so sedimented though? Well, like, I think is it that is that camouflage in itself. Yeah, I think it is camouflage. Wow. That is weird looking. Of course, on the rock, it doesn't blend in completely. But if you think of it on the sediment, it mm -hmm. will. Well, I mean, even on the rock, in, it yeah. looks pretty, pretty close to well camouflaged. Yeah. So it's carrying a sponge on its back. But it's it just also has all of, of these sediment. Sediment attached. everywhere. Yeah. 
to its legs. So I'm actually Psycho thinking damn. this is probably not the same species Who's as we collected. Um, again, uh, I think it's an Aposclerid, so in the same sort of group, but not the Aliclona we oh. collected earlier. It does look different. Yeah, it, it is different. Okay, From a clear. distance, it looked um, a bit similar with this very wide oscul, uh, mm -hmm. apical oscul, but it is not. You're full wide. Okay, going. You want to push out a bit or go ahead and get a move in? I think we can get a move in. Okay. I'm looking straight down at you. It's going out. Bridge now. I'd like to request a shimu. Range three zero meters. Bearing zero nine seven degrees. Speed zero decimal two knots. Yeah, and here to the left you can see actually the skeletons, actually a couple of them. Mm. The skeletons and you can tell that they're not skeletons. bright white yes. anymore. Yeah, exactly. So, so they're what's the what's left behind. Yes, exactly. That will be the silica skeleton, which mm -hmm. in this case is, is fused as well. So it will remain sort of in place and silica dissolution in the water will take a long, long time. Mm -hmm. And this looks like so just a lot of talus of the rocks, mm -hmm. um, you know, Some of it might be in place, but we're kind of moving up, we're moving up slope. We're seeing more rocks. We're seeing more angular rocks. We're seeing a lot more of them. Oh, that's a cool looking sponge. Is that two sponges together or one yeah, sponge? It looks, sponge? It looks like it's right. actually one sponge. Oh. It's, they seem to be merged at the base. Um, Is that common? Yeah, it's not uncommon. Okay. Also, some sponges can actually reproduce asexually, mm -hmm. like by bee partition. So. Oh, and this is again a very that pretty let us look down sponge. Inside. And that I one's think alive. Prob prob right? Yeah, this one mm -hmm. is alive. Um, not sure it's the same species as we've seen before. At least this one is considerably larger. Mm -hmm. um, okay, Roland. It's very pretty. You've got a minute Let's to look at it. Have a look at it. Yeah, it's probably within. Yeah, it's probably the same species. Let's go to the top. But there are actually a number of species within these groups that are remain to be um, described. Mm -hmm. I was just and thinking about those little intricate, yeah. black sticks that are behind that we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Yeah. And I wonder if they're just coated in manganese as well, oh, much yeah. like the pteropods that we saw. So oh, yeah, perhaps. I wonder if they are actually you know, also black or if they have a coating on them. And it's beautiful here. Mm -hmm. all you can see so well the detail of these yeah, fringing of this fringe of spicules surrounding the oscule of the sponge. Mm -hmm. It's really Good. beautiful. Tilt down the cam yeah, slowly. Just and, let's and then all of these yeah. are spicules too that are yes, sticking out, yes, right? Yes, exactly. That is let's, beautiful. Let's see if we do find an inhabitant. Ah, oh, there is something there. there. We can't quite see what it is, but there is something in it. Can so what down. usually would you expect to find living in a sponge? So typically you find either these um, these um, scale worms line. that we've seen earlier, um, or uh, two small um, squat lobsters. Um, and there's this idea that uh, a pair of those will enter the sponge still at larval stage, and, and then the they will clear. remain together for life. Out. Oh wow! So story goes that. Um, in the past, some of these sponges were offered as a as a wedding gift uh, in Japan. Oh, that's <laughs> lovely. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to say for that the symbolism of uh, yeah. that. forever that's together. Yeah. <laughs> that puts high school sweethearts to shame. Yeah. Check yeah. <laughs> out the terrain on stream two. Oh yeah, you can see if we oh. if you want to switch over to camera two for a little bit, those of you who are watching from shore, you can see that we're definitely moving into um, a much more exposed rock face. And one of the other geologists on board has just wandered in to basically cheer. <laughs> I do have your lowers are shut down. Don't to tickle so them we up. have reached now yeah, the wall. Yeah, maybe you should a little bit. <laughs> yeah, so we've definitely reached that higher Mm -hmm. um, that steeper slope. 
And so Thomas, maybe you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what we're seeing? Oh yeah, I uh, should probably finish finish eating a piece of candy before I start. <laughs> <laughs> Give me just a couple minutes here. You're not allowed oh, to have candy in the control room. It, Thank you. What kind of sponge is that? <laughs> Looks like a what kind of sponge is that one, Joanna, while well, Thomas is getting set garlic. up? We need to zoom in to have a look at it. These are very cool. Yeah, it's difficult to say. So it is most definitely a demo sponge. It doesn't have the looks of a, of a glass sponge. Um, oh, that's actually quite interesting. You can see the very clearly the openings, um, mm -hmm. both uh, ostia through which the water goes in. Oh, oh it has cool. a very nice uh, superficial pattern. Um, I can raise it up if you want. Let's but hold it's it for a, a second. It Actually, looks like it has these like raised the conules. So at this depth, it would be actually um, unusual to find a group of sponges that have um, Let's go ahead and bring them up 30 spongy fibers. Although yeah, this, this uh, surface with these raised points um, usually indicate that Slate that you down, would find a lot of spongy fibers um, as part of the skeleton of the sponge. But it's not so common, actually, to find it at these depths. So it's very interesting. Uh, I wouldn't be able to actually to put a name to this without um, examining it in the lab. Mm -hmm. But certainly a demo sponge. Cool. Okay. A couple of really big ones over here to your starboard. Kind of as we zoom out, we really get a better view of Go ahead, Bridge. This. That, uh, Thank you, Bridge. Is that a coral on the lower left? Large or exposure that we found or ourselves on. Uh -huh. Want to show them? Yeah. Oh, and what is that? Just climbing over the top of you. I got to go soon, Roland. Yeah, that's clear. Is this some is that an sort anemone? of, yeah, that's what I was wondering. Up we it go. doesn't look like an anemone. Oh. Anemone. I just make it up as I go along. Just gonna and go then right somebody up tells me when I'm wrong. It, I was wondering if it looked more a bit like a stoloniferous coral, but I would believe that. I couldn't see. Thank you. So would this be like a slide of, of all of these far rocks left. coming from far left? the top of yep. the I, I mean, I do think that what we're looking at right now is mm -hmm. a talus slope, which is, you mm -hmm. know, the rocks are not in place. But we are moving up to an exposure where the rocks I are in place. And yeah. Thomas, maybe we want to talk a little bit about this? Sure. So from kind of the, the, the broad overview, Settling in. if you were watching us map overnight, um, as I know, all of you probably <laughs> I was going to say, right? people do sleep. Uh, Can you spin the, right and the look feature at that the wall feature? Make sure you're not right like on the edge uh, of a overhang. Large, sure uh, core complex. Mm -hmm. or, um, no, I'm going to settle into this. Really just a, a large block of oceanic crust that due to faulting has kind of raised itself okay, much mm -hmm. higher than it started uh, when it was closer to the ridge. And that movement, the tectonic like movement. The sponge is branched allows the opportunity yeah, for mantle rocks. Okay, good. Rocks that we don't Just typically make sure see it wasn't like surface coming up mm -hmm. underneath your right side. Exposed. Can you get um, a more so this is uh, view from the left or the right? Geologically really no. a, an exciting Maybe. place if we've had out. enough tectonic activity here to expose those over mantle me? rocks. Uh, right. Seven five. But of Ships course, not everything's moving. covered in That's that right. manganese crust you were describing earlier. So it's hard to tell if we're looking at mantle or the typical submarine uh, lavas that we find mm -hmm. most everywhere else we go. And the only real difference in terms of looking at them That's when we're, if, if we were to look at a fresh exposure of, okay, of either of those, an area where it wasn't covered in manganese left. crust, would yeah, really be the in. crystal structure, right? Yeah, I think you would see, you would see kind of That's it, I got crystals. my left Ooh. side sort of buried in this yeah. slope, so it's not the best shot. I want to talk geology the best this toe hole I was going to say, maybe we'll let you on oh, talk about the sponge <laughs> now. This is a beautiful exactly now. It's sponge and a very unusual one because it looks like a new plectelid, but for some reason it looks like it's branching off. So you can see these various branches coming off of that central point there. Um, and this is very unusual. Um, I don't know if this could be a result of a sexual uh, propagation of the sponge, so it can sort of um, be partitioned itself in several <coughs> in several colonies. But I've certainly have, haven't seen it like it this clear. before. So yeah. very interesting. Check to see if they want is this it. something we might want to sample tomorrow? Um, I think I would wait to see 
what else we find okay. now on the cruise, because I do think that we're going to find a number of different species, Video both of clear. corals and sponges okay. along Let's the way. Go. All right. And at least we have now a good view of it. Mm -hmm. And this is really, from a geology standpoint, this is more of what we were hoping to find, where we actually could see um, sort of the exposed face of of the rock wall rather than the, the sediment that was covering um, mm. the geology yeah, before. Looking straight down, that's right. Copy. Yeah. I'm just going to acquire this spin left and walk up. Understood. Come up, make sure I clear that. See, these look like cooling textures, though. That's what I was see. just looking yeah. at. Like, did those, yeah. they looked sort of like radial fractures, but sort mm -hmm. of... Like not entirely, and then see, I think a lot of it is also just sort of coated in this. Do you want to adjust and line up on that guy? Do you want me to I follow think. you over? Uh, but well, no, we're definitely seeing some texture. I don't texture. know if this is a local feature, or if this is going to keep going up in that direction. I'm thinking it's wow. kind of local. Okay. Let's wait till I get up and push her out a little. Yep. Yeah, you're definitely seeing some pillow structures now. Yay, pillow is my favorite. So you can see all the things that look circular, especially on the left side of the screen. Um, and those are um, basically fragmented pillow basalts, would be my guess. Um, and what we're starting to see behind them is a little bit more intact the pillow structures. Steepness. And what happens is is they form, and then they basically the end cracks off and falls to the bottom. So oh. we're, you know, that's where all you get right the now. talus slope at the bottom. And then you get these pillow fragments at the top. So Deb, are these are these pillows the mantle rocks we were hoping to find? No, these are not. These would be the um, the mid ocean ridge basalt. So this is it, by by seeing the pillows, we're looking at things that were erupted basically at the surface. So um, which is still awesome. We still love basalts. We have no no problem with finding mid ocean ridge basalts with a pillow structure um, because it sort of talks about their eruptive history and what's happened here. But it is surprising because it's not what we had hoped to find. Meanwhile, we're just on a small part of a really big, <laughs> really big core complex. So hopefully, or what we think might be a core complex. So hopefully um, when other people come to explore it further, they might learn more about the lower, the crustal rocks. Okay, you guys. It was really exciting out. this morning to see the overnight mapping data. That oh, it was amazing. Like going, right, guys? Uh, okay, so what the do difference you think? between the, uh, the old data, shows not to say the old data is bad, we have it but moving we have 97. newer, it looks like more higher resolution technology available to us now. Mm -hmm. um, that maybe. Um, I'm facing a hill at 150 temporarily. 100 meters or so. Okay. Maybe move along. What we mapped on Okeanos before. 135, I don't know. Okay. We're excited to Sounds add that good. to the global compilation. Of 30 meters? I hesitate 20. to ever Let's say that 20. the bathymetry that we saw before was bad because it was better than nothing, right? Like it yes. at least gave us some indication that there oh, were, that, that it was a so higher okay. bathymetric area. So it was enough for us to say, oh, this is interesting. And it sort of goes Great along with chef. what we expect. Therefore, we should map it. So like, like I hesitate to say that move. it was bad. But this Range is so much better. Two, zero the, the data that we collected Bearing overnight one, last three, night five is degrees. it shows Speed, the, the, the corrugation. It shows the striations <laughs> of um, what might be right, faults. So it shows so much more than we saw in the original it's data. Bearing one, three, yes. five degrees. And this follows in with our some of our kind Think of overarching rich. objectives to systematically explore the oceans. We're always trying to add new information and improve on old information, but we have to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and so some of the work that's been done before is really, really critical to the great things that we're able to show you now. Mm -hmm. This is really cool. However, I'm a little surprised, and Joanna, maybe you can talk mm -hmm. to this, that we're seeing a lot Possible more hard surface. We're seeing, you know, not so many and not, uh, or corals. We're yeah, not corals, seeing a lot of, I mean, we're seeing true. a few sponges here and there, but yeah. I guess I thought that we would see more biodiversity once yeah. we hit um, an area that had a lot more hard substrate yeah, and totally a lot less sediment. Totally, me too. It's, uh, as, you know, this really goes to show you, you know, how patchy sometimes these, um, these communities can be. Um, it's very hard to, 
to, to know why exactly they occur in a given area and not in others. Of course, a lot of this work that we're doing in exploring and trying to map the distributions mm -hmm. of these species um, ultimately help us also to model their distribution yeah, to understand what are the key Fire environmental parameters that drive um, their distributions. Um, but yeah, you're right. Uh, I, it's, it's difficult to say given that we have so much available um, suitable uh, substrate at least mm -hmm. for them, why um, we wouldn't find more species Upside uh, down, of different corals and from even lasers. different sponges here. But we'll continue mm. to move up yeah. this like little ridge and see mm -hmm. if we see anything. Now, we saw a lot of talus or loose rock material mm -hmm. at the base of these slopes. So, mm -hmm. Joanna, mm -hmm. what's take it from the there, or should I try to get in for sponges kind that's of colonizing a, a space like this? Yep. That's, that that's a great noise. question. There's very few uh, real colonization studies done, especially in the deep sea, which is uh, particularly challenging. Um, but we do know that at least some of these glass sponges uh, have very long lifespans Stick and slow growth right. rates. So we can imagine that some of these species will be several decades or even uh, uh, centuries old. Um, so I would say that, um, that yeah, um, it's, it's difficult to say when they would have colonized uh, these areas. And we've seen now that uh, at least uh, some these in this specific case, the substrate is actually quite consolidated. So there wouldn't be the, the, the problem of them colonizing a substrate that is not properly consolidated and that could just break off and roll over and destroy the you know, destroy the diversity in the area. So is this like a little hornito? The little local pillow mound? What is a hornito? I it's love that. It's just like a little <laughs> tiny pointed cone, basically. Um, uh, there's I'm going to do a little uh, straight here wet around the uh, geological feature. Yep. Just to show the. And yeah, you can see so much texture in wow. these. You really can see that um, it's, it's not as clear as we've seen in some other places, but it definitely at least to me, it looks like it's mostly um, radial cooling with some what look like flow structures, little. There's also, you know, the sediment's kind of outlining some interesting fractures. This is great. I am surprised. I would have thought, oh, look, look at that. You can just see that circle that is yeah. the outside of a pillow structure. Yeah, that one is very clear, actually. Yep. And then on some of them, you can sort of see what we're almost looking like is the side of the pillow. And pillows are a texture that I think are only found in submarine environments. Um, Go ahead, Bridge. Yeah, it's a function oh. of the quench, Thank you, quenching Bridget. against the cold seawater. Yep. I think Ashton on our last leg of this expedition said it was sort of like a caterpillar where it sort of oh. looped out and then looped the out again and looped oh, really? out again. And yeah, you make what like forms that. like sort of a bulging yeah, ball that look like very round. They look like pillows. Get as close so, to it as you can. It's going to be really small polyps. And sometimes when they're very young, you can have a glassy coating on them. And those are great because when if you can collect that glass, you can find out what the original composition of the magma was before it erupted. So we're always looking for very fresh um, rocks that have a glassy coating that can help okay, us rolling. talk about the original Take composition it. of magmas. These are not fresh. Oh, oh that's isn't that very cool? nice. Yeah, so here we have again one of those hydrocorals. What are those little things on yeah, it? That's what I'm thinking. It looks like some mollusk. Um, we've seen that actually on the previous one. Yeah. And then the brittle stars on the and right side. And the brittle side. stars, yes. Now actually, the probably more than one brittle star there. Are all the polyps on this coral facing away from yeah, us? Yeah, they're, they're facing all in one direction. And oh. that's probably because it's just beneficial of, of the current flow that brings food into them. Finish this shot and you can see way. actually the ones to the top right seem to be not doing great. Looks even there somewhat colonized, are they by some sort of barnacles, it seems? Yeah, I was wondering about yeah. that. It really seems yeah, that's unhealthy those, yeah, compared exactly. to the ones on the, the left side of the screen right now. Yeah. 
Maybe. And so often the um, you know brittle stars use corals or sponges um, to perch themselves, you know, mm -hmm. a, a bit uh, up in the water column, and they're therefore also uh, benefit from increased food supply. Okay. Oh, I oh, actually, Asako is here commenting on the in the chat room something very interesting about because we were we were discussing a little bit about this uh, this idea of the um, Euplectalids being used as a as a wedding gift and how sometimes this story it would be actually very good Another to have a bit more evidence of this. Um, how sometimes these stories um, uh, are like passed on, on um, but there's. Like not a lot of evidence. I mean, and she was actually commenting here that also, although she hadn't seen um, okay. the sponge being used uh, oh, as a wedding yeah. gift, apparently the Japanese name for the sponge Bridge, means yeah. all shrimps lives in same hole. Isn't that cute? Which it's very interesting. Yes, That's and adorable. I did not. Thank you, Asako. I, re I did not know this. Bearing one, three, so five this is why degrees. it's so good so to have zero decimal two nuts. Um, all of this uh, science big folks wall, joining us around. in the chat room. Good copy, Bridge. Oh, look at this. So pretty. Yep. Can you tilt up, please? I sure can. Yeah. You see right, the top so of that with your sonar? Or is that a wall uh, on you? To have yeah, lunch. Might be a wall. I think, and well, Joanna it's a pretty broad return. Briefly, it's not a line, right? No. Many sponges will I'm appear coming soon. up, though. Exactly. That's exactly our luck. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm coming up. Yeah, I'm coming up with you. This is fantastic, though. We're definitely seeing, you can see sort of flow upon flow upon flow. You can see where these rocks, when they heading, were originally though. erupted, yeah. kind of were moving out of that, that central vent area. You can see the fractures where the pillows sort of over, I want to say overbalance themselves, right? They sort of erupted out into nowhere, and then they broke off and fell. Um, and that was what was accounting for a lot of the talus that we saw. Although we didn't see a lot of things that looked super like pillow talus. We saw a lot of, we did see some angular blocks, but so much of it was covered in a manganese coating that it was sort of hard to say, oh yeah, that's a pillow fragment. Um, yep, and there, here we go, a bunch of sponges. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this. So it is interesting, Thomas, because we really, I think we were both hoping that we would see some of these lower rock wow. exposures, and, and we really didn't. Um, yep. And it's really hard to predict what we're going to find when we come mm -hmm. down here. We can, we can have, I, I mean, we have those kind of exposures at places like Lost City, a mm -hmm. little further up north along the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Mm -hmm. um, and then we can find a, a similar looking feature from how we see it in the bathymetry, nice and when we finally get up to looking at it. Yeah, I'm going to tickle those, expected. and then I'll come back to it. Yeah. Oh, this is cool. So do you think if we dove deeper on this, we would be able to see them, or do you think it would all be covered in sediment like we saw oh, when we first terrain. started? So I think that's the 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 gamble that we That's that we take cool. anytime we choose a dive site going deep of course gets you physically closer to things. the earth's mantle so if it's exposed Quick it's more think. likely to be exposed at depth but then we run into the problem of piles of stuff from right. from above kind of and these are the sponges there. that were just the ones that are just rolling. out of frame yep. were um the ones that we saw earlier on vertical terrain yep. um and i of course cannot remember their name This is great. Okay, come out. I'd be okay if you guys zoomed in on some of the pillow, you know, structures at some point in time too. It doesn't just have to always be about the sponges. Just throw that out there. Got time to zoom on that. Actually, this is pillow. really amazing. And then if you if you stop and Stand by. if anybody wants to switch over to camera two on shore, um, which is the view from Sirius, which is like the um, robot that's above, above D2. Well. That's nice you can really see it's right. a gonna pretty let sheer you go face in on now. This one rolling with the crack in the center of it. Go ahead in. I, I think Deb is yeah, this a good. Yeah, look at how uh, beautiful these are. That's a nice rounded globe-shaped mm -hmm. pillow, right? And you really can see though that these have um, 
that manganese coating that we were talking about because this is not sort of the original texture of what a basalt would look like that was freshly erupted on the seafloor. Um, they're also pretty heavy, heavily, Include not heavily light. sedimented, okay. but they're pretty I'm sedimented just as well. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And you're so going to see a sponge. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Bridge. Oh my God! Look at that Thank big you, sponge. Joanne is going to be really upset that we sent her to lunch. And look at that beautiful. Look at these beautiful pillow fragments that we're, we're coming on right now to the left and to above the sponge. Oh, you yeah. can see that very circular um, or oblong, you know. Be all good morphology okay. it's just yeah, they're super just cool perfect what a beautiful sponge i don't know what out. it is anyone okay. anyone anyone no nope nobody knows what the sponge is the chat will the chat yeah, will provide soon sponge. so just this is the cooling just texture just though that i think mm -hmm. deb you've been talking about yep. in the interior of this pillow that the lasers are on oh, right wow. now mm -hmm. um and this happens because of course when the rock is is liquid when it's magma another nice sponge uh, up to the it's right just slightly up up right. larger yep. in volume You're full as it wide cools room. it contracts and you are full wide thank you because it's a solid object contracting it has to break it's and that's cool how we get terrain. these kind of radial fracture features yep. which cool. are very characteristic of these kind of lavas mm -hmm. gnarly yeah. thanks thomas very good explanation there's this coral Again, I'm really Can surprised that we're not seeing more stuff living on these rocks. I wonder if it's really a dangerous place to live, though, because of all the, the talus coming down from up top. Like if you were a brave little sponge <laughs> who, colonized, who colonized this big surface, and then all of a sudden one day a rock comes tumbling down, and it's just a bad day for you. I don't know. I just feel like yeah. who wouldn't want to live on basalt? I would love to live on basalt. Looks like a fantastic place. Ooh, okay. but the more I see, the more I I'm, the more I think that these little the little black stick like things, I do think that they may have a manganese coating because everything looks like it has a ma little manganese coating on it. As opposed to the black okay, coral skeleton. Stable. Yes, I mean I could be completely wrong. Ooh, what is that? That. I'm gonna go with gastropod because it you has a, a shell. Fog? It's Can a hermit crab, a so bit? it's living in a crab. shell. Good there. It's maxing. Thirty percent. That's cool. That's good. And, and it's next to, the, is that a hydrozoa? Hydrocoral. It is a coral? I don't What's know that? what it is. Yep, perfect. Well, that's really cool. Yeah, Tara's confirming that it's a hermit crab. So thank you, Tara. She's and, in our chat room. And that it's a coral. The video's clear. Oh, good. Okay. What kind of coral is it? Coming up the wall. I swear I was listening. And there was a sponge above it. We're starting to see a little bit more sediment than we were for a little bit. Yeah. And I don't know if that's yeah, just because we Pink are on a slightly right. less steep face. So it's just collecting a little bit of sediment. And as we move up, we might see more of that sediment go away. Or if it's here to stay. Oh, wow. Video swapping out. Got video swapping out. Thank you, Roland. So... So it's a sponge. Serious. That's all I can tell you. I was about to start talking about the benefits of telepresence and how you can leave two geologists to stare at sponges over lunch break. And the chat will provide identifications. But Unfortunately, we don't have any sponge experts in the yeah, chat right now, you. although okay. I have great faith in all of the, the biologists who are in the I chat at up. this moment. Yep. Well, looking oh. down at your 75. Yeah, I'm just going to keep climbing the wall. Yep. Ship is stable and... You should be s pretty stable, too. So maybe we're getting sediment. You see how the left yeah, side of the oh screen, yeah, that, yeah. it's just kind of a channel that a lot of the sediment gets focused down. Minutes, a little bit over three minutes stationary. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, but that's not what we were seeing earlier. Before, okay. we were just seeing sort of the sediment ponding on, on some of the mm -hmm. flash parts of rock. But I agree with you completely. That's definitely sort of a shoot, right? It's um, allow <laughs> allowing... The, the sediment to sort of cascade down that area. Coming up with you. Yeah, okay, we're getting up more sponges bit. Give, now, give me I a think. little uh, heads up on what I'm about to run into. Thank you. Well, oh, and something sticking yeah. out. Ooh, yeah. Nice coral. This is a coral for sure. Well, I yeah, take that back. Like you've got plenty <laughs> Every of time I say that, I'm now. wrong, so I'm not yeah. going to say it's a coral for sure. I can start throwing Video, out names and see if this? someone wants if to I tell me what it is. Stand by. Hydrocoral. 
Another metallic Voyager. Courtesy of Manuela. Oh, Cryptelia again. Probably so we need did. Some fogs on this we've one, seen huh? this particular okay. one before. Okay. And there are sponges in the background. Okay, I'm parked. Oh, maybe the Cryptelia was the white one that we saw earlier? Oh, okay. and then. Metallogorgia. Okay. Yes, I was okay. going to say, this seems like one of the, the that's what I was going to go with, was Metallogorgia, which I think happens to be one of Casey that's Cantwell's favorite drive. corals. I can give you more if you hit. This thing floated back into the center of the screen, yeah. just as if on coming And it's in. got that yeah. brittle star wrapped like around nice it. Is this the one that yeah, always right. has a brittle star that's, associate? Uh, 75. So this is, this is, um, the Metallogorgia, this this coral that we're looking at, always has a brittle star. Um, please don't ask me why, because I don't know. It's floating off. But, oh, wow. uh-oh. That is such a great shot, though. I okay, love it's the, still uh, attached. It just was yeah. moving away from us. Woo, I thought we did something to it. No, no. The lighting was fantastic. That was, was beautiful. Like stars floating out there. Yeah, that there. was great. And then we're seeing a couple of the sponges again. And a nice big rock. Can we take that rock home? No? No? Probably not. Considering ahead, it's man. bigger than the vehicle. I was kidding. We don't have to take that rock. Pretty sure <laughs> we're not going to be able to rip <laughs> that, that one, one off. Get that one off. <laughs> okay. It was totally a joke. Um, All right. Looking down at you, 7.5. Okay. Shall we let this go? I think we had yeah. a nice shot of it floating by the camera. That is fantastic. Okay. Take it if you want it. That Metallogorgia is so pretty. Do you think that's more than one brittle star, or do you think yes. that's only one? Yes. I think it looks like three, perhaps. Yes. Uh, at least, there are at least ten arms present. Are you actually counting the no. arms? No. <laughs> no, it's certainly an estimate. Just making it up. Beautiful view. Looks like another big sponge. Here. Wow. Just above you to the right. Okay. And we can see even from this image as we're looking at the Metallogorgia that there's just dotted with sponges throughout. So we are starting okay. to see I'm just gonna let it float off. a little bit more um, in terms of quantity than perhaps we were before. I think you can almost see it in the distance there. Fog's clear. Is that an attack pillow coming up into range? Where do you see? Off to the far left, if you would pan, if you can pan left. What did you no, call no, it? No, I was saying if it was an intact pillow, oh. so not a fractured pillow, but it probably fractured on the side that we can't see. Mm -hmm. You can see more of those cooling, the contraction cracks. Uh, I see maybe a big sponge on the right there. Yeah, that big white thing. I wonder yep. if it's one of those stocked ones that we saw earlier. Yes. I wonder if we can get over to it. Who was writing down the names of these? I wasn't. Obviously, I should have been. So I'm absolutely not going to say that this is the same thing that we saw before, but we did see a cluster like this, a sponge that was sort of composed of these different pieces. Um, but it was on a stock earlier, and I can't really tell from the angle that we're looking at whether or not it's on a stock. Hopefully, Joanna's going to look at these later and say, how did you not know what any of these were? And you can see that large central... Um, I'm not getting any of this on Blue Gear. Hmm. Pathway. Which I think yeah. is the I think that's the one that expels the water on this okay. on this sponge. I think. Well, Fifty percent chance like of being right. Yeah, it's yeah it is so it is, does have a small uh, stock. Small stock? Yeah. Okay. I can range it in if you want to. I think it'd be smart. Forty meters isn't gonna yeah. help us right now. And now we're just moving up this wall. You, it's really exciting. 
and maybe while not exactly what we expected to right. see, it is Coming really indicative and really, I would say, common for, for sort of the mid-ocean ridge. ship is like, still stable. Yeah. I'm still this just is, climbing this along. This is what, yep. the tether we, what have. we often see when we're looking at mid-ocean ridge rocks. We look at yeah, a at lot of um, pillow walls. We look at a lot of, um, you know, fractured basalt. This is pretty common. Right, I'm gonna come but still back quite fantastic. I believe that's where we're and there have been comparatively yep, very very few we dives in this area from okay. what we could tell. And so every time we're learning something about the geology and the biology of the area. Ah, look at that beautiful fragmented pillow right there. And then I'm going to I'm going to guess that this is a dead glass sponge. Euplectellate sponge because it doesn't have that bright white color that we're used to seeing. Instead, it's that sort of darker um, and and darker color, and that's what Joanna has said it still provides a habitat for other living creatures, but it is no longer alive. That looks like that's. More you can start of seeing the some of these pillow noses, going. right? You can sort of see them sticking out. Zero nine seven. One Lots zero of radial nine. fractures yeah, right here. Lots of cooling. On the, the left side, side of the screen, more. especially, yep. you that's can see those right radial there. fractures. I would concur. Mm -hmm. They look like they're all pointing to, to the center yeah. of this to my this left pillow. here. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's a great view of that that mm -hmm. cooling feature. Love this. I'll bring my head in around. Cool. And you can just see where these pillows would have erupted out, and they got so a little too east. far, didn't have anything to sit on, and poof, we were broke. Doing like zero nine seven. That's what you're looking That's at right there. Lined yeah. up pretty well. Mm -hmm. So if you've ever been to right. Iceland, or if you've been to it the it western United south, States, it's been, um, feel like it's Snake been River offset. Plains, yeah. Idaho, Oregon, Washington, you the may have seen columnar basalt, which is the same cooling type feature. I'll sidle um, over to my left not just exactly to line the same up on as that the heading. Pillow basalts that are erupted so underwater, so but over. the same process of cooling up. and contraction. Um, yeah, to the top, Bathy's nine seven, kind of what we were doing before. Yeah. And so there's another euplectellid sponge. I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess that this one's alive because of that sort of blue white color that we see. And then that's another sponge up in the top left hand corner. And you can see that uh, probably the relic of a pillow at the top of it. Um, it's a great. We do have one of our sponge experts here. has entered entered the virtual building. They're in the chat room, Shirley Pomponi, and so hopefully she might be able to tell us. Wow, there's actually a lot of sponges in view right now. So, I'm so park I can it here count. And we can seven take our time and look right at there. some so of these sponges. So we can take a little bit of time. Um, we can look at that nice pillow fragment that looks even like it's a little bit hollowed out at the bottom right hand side. We'll start while with also the pillow. Looking at some of these. Um, actually, we can start with the sponges. That would be great. Okay, go ahead. So we're going to zoom in on a couple of these Brian sponges. I'll try to. And as we zoom in there, we see some sponges that are coming, going right out of frame. That yet yeah, they're coming down. And we actually collected one that looked like this. I'm not going to say it's the same one. I am not a sponge expert. But um, that one that is in the bottom right-hand corner does look like something that we collected earlier on this dive. Um, and the one to the left of it has that central ossicle. Ossicle? No, that's not the right word. What's it called? No, I think you're right. Is it an ossicle? And I believe this sponge was the geodia. The one on the right. Oh, on the right. Yeah, I think yep. you're right. And and that is what we collected before. And it's something, so Joanna mentored Aspire. Um, and this is one of the, the species that we're super interested in. So that's the Atlantic Seafloor Partnership for Integrated Research and Exploration. And so that's basically a multinational campaign that we've been working with for the past five or so years um, to better characterize the North Atlantic. and. I think one of the things that Joanna in particular was excited about finding this species here is it, I'm not sure if it's a range extension, but she said this is the furthest south that we've seen something like this. So it kind of leads to the connectivity of the North Atlantic Basin, and it's pretty exciting to see how, how these things disperse and where we see them in similar, similar types yeah. of habitats throughout mm -hmm. the ocean basin. 
On the one to the left, the sponge to the left, um, Sam, is maybe a haplosclerid. So I'm guessing. Sure. And that's from Shirley, who's one of our other sponge experts. And we are seeing again these very these little black stick-like things, and we we've spent a lot of time talking about them, whether they are um, spines of sea urchins, whether they are just manganese encrusted stuff, which is sort of where I'm leading. Um, but on this this sponge that we're looking at on the left, um, it has oh size? thank God Joanna's back. <laughs> it has it has that central. It's an osculum. Evidently, oh. I got it wrong before, but I was fairly close. So we were talking about the fact that the sponge we saw on the right, Joanna, is we think is one that we sampled. Oh, um, yes, that's the same we sampled just yeah, a while ago. And then the one on the left, Shirley identified as it may be a haplosclerid. Yes, yep. yes, I would agree with that. And, we've, and then Hi, we Shirley. were just talking about the, the little twigs. Yeah, so that uh, sponge to the right is, uh, what we, is what I think is Georgia pachydermata. So that is... Um, that is a, a, a species that has been um, that has been identified as a priority right, from the, ready, under right. the Aspire campaign. Okay. So we're trying to look into connectivity patterns um, of the benthic fauna um, of the North Atlantic, and so this is a great opportunity because well, this south. is quite further south from the um, from where the species is known to occur. So. It's a great, if it is that same species, which we will, of course, have to examine in the lab to, to be completely sure of. Um, it's, um, it's a range extension for these species here um, in the North Atlantic. So that corroborates my guess of what I just went through. So I'm glad to hear it from oh. the expert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Great, uh, Sam. We've seen them. We can do a partial. If oh, we and I already can see they're coming into view. Another yep. beautiful specimen of um, Sacocalyx, but we will see that in a minute. So here coming into view now is again the hydrocoral. So this Cryptelia okay, hydrocoral we'll seems to actually be quite uh, common here um, nope. uh, in this in this uh, dive site. Oh, again, actually, we're seeing again this uh, branched Euplectelid like sponge. And I wonder if we're in a good position to sample pilot. Uh, we can be. Um, yeah, give me a We didn't collect the first specimen of these that we've seen yeah, earlier because right. we weren't we sure closer, uh, you know, whether or not we would be finding more along the way. But since we did... You want to come back wide for me? I think this would actually... I've never seen okay. um, a neoplectalid with this sort of morphology, so branching like this. What do you think, Todd? Come around from the right. Mm -hmm. Shot on nose in there. Yep. Do we want to get the ship a little bit closer? I can't quite figure out how large I think that'd be it smart. Is. I think it's pretty small. Think five, mm. ten meters. Yep. So yeah, that uh, is always that the, good. the hard yeah. part is get, yeah. gaining Maybe perspective. Ten. Yeah. Um, and for those listening, there's been a, a shift in the room from geology to biology. So yeah. we should be getting some more answers on one side and leaving some more things to the imagination on the other and, and hoping that our telepresence capabilities Bridge, yeah. um, allow us to get more experts like on the line that move. can help us describe one zero what's meters, going on that's outside of our areas of expertise. Bearing 094 degrees, speed 0 decimal 2 knots. Not going to be able to get my toe out there. But mm -mm. Good copy, Bridge. Take it and float off. Mm -hmm. Good. Yeah, or just. Yeah, and we're getting here some support yeah. um, in the chat room yeah, regarding the collection better. of this pond, which is great. Mm -hmm. and sit down on top of it. All right, Brian, you want to get some imagery of this? Yeah, and this you can imagine that these are the kinds yep. of samples that um, often, if, if it would have been collected, lights. you know, through dredge as it used to be in, this, in the most historical campaigns. It would come um, on deck completely, you know, uh, destroyed in, in fragments. These are so delicate. Um, oh, wow. And actually just to the left of it and behind of it, there's a carnivorous sponge as well. I just realized. Yeah, I was thinking at, at some of the other oh, species that we saw 
Sure. Like if you had dredged it, some of the stalked species, you would have no idea that it was stalked. You, exactly. you can't tell how it, the attachment it. points. Yeah. And it's all it's also okay. fragile also it it would be destroyed. <laughs> So this is really a rare opportunity that we uh, taxonomists have to actually see the external morphology, the intact external <coughs> morphology of these species. Um, okay. And then we have a lot of work to do in the lab to, to put a name to them yep. uh, looking by looking at the spicules and the structure of their skeleton. It's but amazing this, how course, intricate these yeah. sponges are. Yeah, it's really, it really is. And so that okay. white twig you can see to the left yep. behind that sponge that is sort of uh, okay. swinging around in the, in the current was actually um, a carnivorous sponge. And so carnivorous sponges are no another really interesting group of sponges that have um, okay, devised a, a mechanism, okay, a new feeding it. strategy um, thought to be adapted to food poor environments such as the deep well, sea or for instance in submerged caves in shallower waters. They belong to the family Cladorizidae. There are over hun roughly 140 species known. Um, um, and what's really interesting about this group is that. I was planning to grab it. And what's really interesting you about this group is that um, yeah, I think that's what they're they've reduced their aquifer okay. system. Okay. And so really instead, they have these modified structures that can be either very long, thin filaments or these inflated right. uh, okay. orbs. Right which are covered on a, a, a spicule type that looks that has these hooks. So it wor functions a little bit like a Velcro. Right, I'm going to follow you. Yeah, understood. And now for so, those, yeah. for those uh, carnivorous sponges, is that their Pretty only method the of eating? Something yes, down it a is. Bit they now. have reduced yeah, uh, or completely absent aquifer system. So they do oh, not wow. filter the water anymore. Uh, that's my angle there. Can't Make sure you got yeah, so pilot, they, uh, no. the best would be actually to grab it from the base. Um, yeah, that's as far as I can get from as far as an angle. Go the other way then, spin it all the way around then. The, uh, if the you're already against the hard stuff. I'm talking about for the wrist. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, not the, not the uh, jaw. Well, I got plenty of that. Okay. I can't get any more wrist though. Got it. All right, can you give me a partial brine on the main. All right, pull back a little bit. Yeah, a little bit further, pull it's back. It's actually small, oh, smaller yeah, than grip, it looked like. Grip check here real quick. Six, we'll go with three. You, you did three last time, right, Todd? Uh, it, if you're gonna just barely grab it, or are you gonna just snip it at the base? I was gonna try to snip it. Yeah, four. three is still plenty to yeah. snip this thing, right? It should be. I think it's really delicate. Yeah, that gives you more sensitivity on the trigger, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm just going to test the grip here real quick. Okay, that feels good. Oh, it's loose. Might want to zoom out. Yep. That full wide. Okay. It's stable. Yep. I'm gonna have to rotate over. Might still be moving. It's I'm gonna follow up the Zeus. Yeah. The mini Zeus. Let's see how far it goes. You can see there's a tiny bit of current only. There's full wide but yeah. so many things for it to snag on. Mm. I see it in Mini Zeus. Yep. Tilting down on Mini Zeus, bringing it back to center. There it is. Sit out for a second. Well, you got a better toehold now, anyway. I sure do. Here come partial like Brian.
Mm. Yeah. Oh. You're gonna get the coral in that grab. Seems to be wanting to so to close. run away, yeah. The current really isn't helping here. There it is. You got there it, it is. Okay. Yep. Oh. <laughs> it's all right. You got it. Just move slow. It's okay. Tell me when you're ready for sample boxes. Yeah, if you want to go ahead and try to come out Oof. with it. Yeah, it's still some in the jaw the there. Chunk. Yeah, we got at least part of it, which and will allow us to do the taxonomic work that's needed. Yeah, my understanding is it's, it's all in the spicules for these, right? Yes. So while the imagery that we collected kind of shows some of the morphology, the important for thing height. from here yep. on out is more just having those. Yes, the samples, internal right? morphology, exactly. As much as we want a nice, and pretty, a complete bit further down. <laughs> sponge sample. So this will be our sample number oh. five. It's floating in. It's floating in, I think. Yep. Tell me. Go ahead and clear it. Close it. Yeah, it's in there. Yeah, it's in there. Okay. Retracting pin. Thank you, pilot. Yeah, sorry, we weren't able to collect all of it. That's okay. Got a piece of it. Yes. All right. I draw it secure. Ramping down, disabled. Centering mini Zeus. Pilot, can you just confirm which bio box that was that went into? It's going to be port outer. Okay, thank you. The rest of it's still over here, isn't it? Oh, that should regrab, right? Repopulate. Okay, the ship is not moving, correct? Oh, yes. That's so that's right. the Sacrocalyx pedunculatus that we saw earlier on. I took the Which words right out of my mouth. Yeah. <laughs> seen this one a time or and two. it has this beautiful sac morphology with all these um, ruffles on the outside. Ah, and then this one actually does seem like there's something living in it. Uh, I, was just gonna, I think we've seen this one a couple of times. We can let it go. All right, come back wide. Down. I'll just do a flyby over it. That's all the way down. You can do a partial there. I'm just here taking notes oh, of the go. collection we just did. Yeah, there we go, and we can really see that's a beautiful view of the atrial cavity of the of the sponge. And actually, it does seem that it has. Yeah, one of those polynoid scale worms. They're on the upper part. I can set up if they want to see more. I just gave you some more light. Upper wow, swing look at arm that. Pointed down. This is something we don't get the opportunity to see very often. No, it's amazing. This level of detail of the internal cavity of the sponge. Oh, it's beautiful. Sorry, no. Uh, At the risk uh, of incurring uh, yeah. your wrath, yeah. I think a lot of uh, people yeah. just think of sponges as these incredibly simple things, but to see how intricate they are. Yeah. I know I said this before, but it's still still true. It's still it's still <laughs> true, and it still catches me off guard yeah. even after seeing one recently. I'm just kind of in awe from it. Nice. I'm just trying to get up on top of it, but I don't think I'm going to do that. All right, we'll let yeah, it go. And, and Shirley here uh, in the chat room is yep. saying that these are like cotton balls, that they totally collapse when uh, taken out of the water, of course. Thank you. Mm. 
Brian, can you brighten up the starboard mid up at all? It's pretty dark. Another glass sponge. So a little bit closer, pilots. Sorry, I was here yeah. just taking notes I'm of this good. last um, you, sample Chris? that was yeah, collected. Um, uh, yes, so this looks again like so one of those Ilplectelid sponges. Um, a bit different, 15. I think. Looks like there's the remains of one next to it as well. Like anything in that one. First return on Sirius is uh, over 25 meters away. Yeah. I think you're good to push no, out. There's nothing yet on there. Unless we're yeah. going to stop and go a lot. No. I think we can go. No sponge. Yeah. Class sponge. Coming up. I don't know. What do you think? 15 or 20? Yeah, 20 probably. I don't see much on Sirius. So no. No. Okay, I'll call in a 20 at, uh, so the last move was 0 9 4. Um, same thing? Yeah, I think that works. Thanks, Andy. And again, continues to surprise me, actually, that we're not seeing that many corals. Yeah, um, you're getting out there a ways on the tether. There's this Understood. really nice consolidated right, substrate uh, for them to, Bridge, yeah. Yeah, to colonize. Like Thomas was hypothesizing mm -hmm. earlier that mm -hmm. it may be two zero meters due to rubble toppling down zero nine four often degrees. Maybe okay. speed zero decimal I don't know. It doesn't it look very like rubbly, though. No. no. It, it seems like... Beautiful pillow that for you there, Deb. Good copy, Rich. So did, did you guys collect a rock? Yeah. Or got me collect a sponge? We collected a sponge. Yeah. <laughs> we would not collect the rock without you here, Deb. <laughs> Fantastic. And where did you collect it? Where, what, um... 15... No, uh, what, 17, uh, 15, what oh, box here. is it in? Outer port box? Port. Okay. Okay. Yeah, these look, these rocks look fairly in place. Don't think we'll be collecting any of these right now. <laughs> Not with that attitude. <laughs> I think for these rocks we would need a, we would need an uh, ROV mounted saw. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tempt Deb with a good time. I was no. going to say, <laughs> yeah. you can make these things happen. You never know. With enough will. Or lasers, cutting lasers instead of measuring cutting lasers. Oh, could you imagine? Wow. Mm. Oh, that would be great. Our sampling would become a little bit more destructive at that point. <laughs> Not really. If it was sort of surgical, it wouldn't be a problem. Yeah. So, we'll so it looks like we're see still seeing, we're sort of in the that pillow basalt, and pillow rubble. Did I miss anything? Just a sponge collection. Okay. Yeah. Some we found sponges. again one of those branched eupleptolid-like oh, yeah. sponge. So yep. we thought we might as well collect. So we got a nice fragment of it. Yeah, Fantastic. Some of it. Yeah. It tried to make a grand escape. Yeah. Now it will continue. It will grow yeah. back, right? We'll well, not this one. Not probably that <laughs> oh, okay. one because it lost its attachment point. Oh, it did so lost its yeah. attachment point. Okay. But it's oh, for, but it's for a one? better good. What is this thing growing we on need the... To zoom is that a sponge with a... A crinoid? A crinoid. Uh, it something? looks like it's, it's a... a they're doing, so I think they're doing some lunch shift changes, so okay. we have to wait to sure. see what's going on. But you can also see those nice yep. textures of the pillows mm -hmm. next to it. Oh, these are beautiful pillows right here. Sure or broken can. pillows, I should say. Yes, a it's bit. a beautiful crinoid there. Attached to the um, sponge skeleton. Hey, Pat. 
Sure. Look at that. And it's interesting because here we have both a part that seems to be... I was going to say, is that a little bit both dead? alive and yes, dead? Yes, exactly. So it's a zombie sponge. Yeah. Oh, zombie sponge. <laughs> That's a new one. That's so a new one. So it's actually quite interesting because it seems that a sponge colonized the internal part of a dead skeleton. Look at that. So how do you know that... I mean, I think I'm, sh I'm totally sure you're right considering you're a sponge expert, but how mm -hmm. do you know that it's like a new sponge that's colonized an old sponge yeah, versus like a dying sponge. No, you know? bec no, because you can see that steel has like the, the typical wall mm -hmm. um, um, detail, as you can see there. And mm -hmm. on the outside, you see that it's a dead skeleton. That's so interesting. So my guess Go is ahead, that Rich. this was a skeleton. Thank it was you, um, another Euplectelli that uh, was living there. Good, and it died. It left the skeleton behind. And for some reason, the larvae of this Euplectelli just found so um, that to be a very to good you. place to settle and grow. Yeah, mm -hmm. And now it has extra protection. That's really cool. Yeah, it's very interesting. Yep, whenever you're ready, Brian. And we have their... Uh yeah. How are you guys doing? Good, man. Oh, what was fantastic. the last move at direction? So Nine, we're still moving four our way degrees. up the wall. Nine, what is our degrees. depth? Our depth is around 1745 yeah. right now. Yeah. So we've um, progressed. We started at about 1900. So we've so we progressed quite a bit. Oh. Yeah, about 150 Center meters up in vertical um, mm -hmm. elevation. Yeah, no, you're good. Mm-hmm. I hesitate to say that we're being quicker than we normally are, but we are trying to move <laughs> a little bit. I'd say we're over halfway up. Yeah. And so the idea is yeah. to ascend to the Stand top by. of this ridge. Right. I'm going to settle and up and once we uh, get there, sit down on this, and then maybe I'm going to swap out for, wander off oh. to for John. I sides. think we have here our first metallogorgia. Look at that. Not our first, Joanna. It's not. So you <laughs> saw. No, we saw oh, the Talagorgia when you saw one while I was away. It took away. a while to figure it out, but okay. we did. It was so beautiful, we didn't want to bring it up. Yep. We didn't want to tell you. All right, Brian. But and good eyes, because I could barely see that. Yeah, it's. It sort of just hides with you. the rocks. You want to take a little bit more. Okay. And this is, and it has its. Um, Pretty it's just just a brittle star, really tightly, really wrapped, tightly wrapped, wrapped around. Yeah. That central axis, it's really impressive. Got Levi sent down here now. Uh, wow. Via bill at uh, 270, that's what I got. Roger, thanks. Oh, really nice. Mm -hmm. Now, what was that last move at distance wise? 20 meters. 20 meters, good copy. Look just how delicate those polyps are. Look at how yeah, tight. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> God, that thing is like super tight around there. Yeah. What, by being that tightly coiled, what is it gaining? I mean. Yeah, I, I guess, I mean, it probably is not always in that, um, okay. in that position there. I actually wonder if it does adopt a more tighter tightly coiled position because um, because we're here because of the lights i don't know when a giant light monster comes out. yeah exactly <laughs> it's first thing to do is say i'm yeah, going to just... wrap myself more tightly around yeah. this <laughs> you're not taking yeah uh, if you take yeah. if you're taking my coral i'm going yeah <laughs> hey pilot how's it going hey co-pilot good Neff. hey pilot starboard bios are full Roger. Or and it's interesting because I think in what we've seen and also in previous dives with these metallogorgias is that Copy. as they grow um, <coughs> older, um, this term, the, the, the branches that we see along the main axis hey, will video. start falling and we will only have the, the, the terminal branches here? with, um, with the polyps. But here it's not the Roger. case. So we have here, different branches with lots of polyps all along the, the length of that central axis. I'm so impressed that you can even see that. Even now, knowing where it is, that's going to be very hard to yeah. see on Somewhere that 10 meters, video. Somewhere 20s.
Yeah, and Asako is actually uh, saying that this is could be a juvenile metallogorgia. But already has its um its ophiroid. It's a nice pen over here. Oh a nice uh yeah, so Tara here in the chat room is also saying yeah, that these um, strange looking urchin that we saw er case. very mm -hmm. early on on the on our dive yeah was an aspido de <laughs> de matit even for me this one is difficult <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um because and it seemed that that structure on the top was the 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 urchin anal bulb we need to know more about this from Chrisma. <laughs> I do not need to know more about that. <laughs> <laughs> that was enough for me. <laughs> Thank you. It is. <laughs> Even with the uh, three of them are pegged. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it was 42. Oh. I, like, I turned lights on. Aspido. Like, do Dodio. Uh, Matid, as we do dia de matid. 42. 42. And they were yeah. only like 80%. Yeah, and that Very was nice. from, yeah, that was, um, identification was from Chrisma himself. At 50. Once you start to go Who down. Who is an expert yeah. in a kind of Yes. Okay. It's good to, you know, at the Smithsonian. Don't go 100% on them at 50 because you will probably cook that bottle. Yeah. Let's see, looking at me, almost 100. Zero zero. It looks like the direction of the slope here, huh? Yeah, I think about 195, 100. Looks Roger. pretty good. Oh, um, again, one of these sponges. So yeah. they are not so uncommon here. I don't see anything on blue view. It looks like any step feature. Have to find out what it is. Last last watch did say that there was some, some really step beautiful. action happening. Um, is that another metallic Yeah, orta? a large but, uh, one no yeah. there. On current sonars. This one doesn't seem to have those polyps along the main axis there. So this is probably a, an adult one, or at least not a juvenile. Did you uh, want to zoom on this watch lead or? Yes, please. That would be okay. Yeah. This we tall guy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on in, video. I'm just enjoying the angular structures of the rocks too, like <laughs> the, the way that they've cooled. And we've seen a lot of these pillow assaults, but we're also just seeing some large wow. blocky texture. Oh, that is cool. I just find it so fascinating that every time I ask why is there a brittle star associated with metallic gorges, Everyone kind of says, because that's the way it is. And, yeah. <laughs> and I would love to know the answer for why. To, to me, what's most, most intriguing is how does it find it? Yeah. Because it's not like we're seeing this, um, uh, this ophiroid um, in, uh, you know, in other substrates or elsewhere. Copy so it that. seems to be a, um, a very tight we'll association with this metallogorgia species. Mm -hmm. So how would it find it? Yeah. And just well, say, especially yeah. in areas like this where... We are, it's very patchy and we're exactly. not seeing a ton of, of, you know, it's not like we're seeing metallogorgia after metallogorgia where they could presumably crawl from one to the next if they wanted to. Yeah. Here, there just seems Roger. to be so, it's, and it's that's, um, yeah, that's lower biodiversity in this area. Yeah, and that's probably why it uh, really. Should be a little more stable here now, Brian. Attaches very tightly to it. Once what do it you finds think, what, it. What do you think happens to it once the metallogorgia dies? Um... That's a good question. I mean, I think uh, as long as the axis of the metallogorgia would stay in place, I guess it would probably remain. Um, but yeah, I don't think we know. I don't think... Yeah. Um, I just find it fascinating and weird. There's just so many mysteries in deep sea yeah, biology, isn't exactly. it? Yeah, Oh, look at those beautiful... And so one of the geologists polyps. in the chat, Eric yeah. Fielding, asked whether those brittle stars live other places. And that I can answer. Yes, we see them in other places as well. Um, so they're not entirely only associated with metallogorgia. No. You can see them just... But, but I think that this species nice in particular nice. is associated just to this metallogorgia. Just to metallogorgia. Yeah. But so we do see brittle stars of yeah. many types. Yeah, exactly. Um, in, other, in other types of... Uh, all right, see him. But if we were yeah. to collect this, we would find out that it was a, a genus that, or a Can species that was only related like. to Metallogorgia. Fascinating. Yeah. I'm oh, and there goes another sponge. Oh, look at that. What, 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 what kind of crab is this? It starts with a P, right? Uh, no, it, this is not actually a. It does. Oh, it's I'm not, not one I'm that not, has I'm a sponge not sure, on its back? I'm not sure if it's a juvenile Paramola crab. Paramola is what yeah. I was thinking about, yeah. yes. But you don't necessarily it, think this is a paramola? It doesn't, unless it's a really s juvenile one. Roger. It doesn't look like that genus. Nice job. But yes, it's again carrying a very small piece of sponge. 
on its back, probably uses it as some sort of camouflage. I think it's weirdly sedimented legs are even better camouflage. Yeah. Copy that. Pulling away. Looks like the wind gauges are off a little bit. 14, 18. Nice shots, Brian. Yeah, one's supposed to be true and one's supposed to be um, relative, but we're not moving, so should yeah. be, they should be the same. So I was looking here for the name of this uh, brittle star, and it seems could be Ophiocreas oedipus, um, which uh, is associated so to this Metallogorgia melanotricus. Yeah, copy that. I'm looking at you four zero. Oedipus, like uh, Oedipus, like uh, the and I am all stationary. So yeah. Greek or Roman tragedy? I don't know. Let me see. We can I get questions. to the top. <laughs> That's exactly what I was wondering. <laughs> It can't live without its metallogorgia. Hey, Bridge is RV now. Uh, what are your relative wind birds reading right now for magnitude? I got one of mine says 17, 17 still, 17, 16. I'm just gonna turn to the right and okay. look at the slope here. 15, all right. I'm just looking at true in and it's 11, 12. I've seen a discrepancy on our SCS true versus these, you know what I mean? Okay. Yeah, 18, got it. My readout. So there's several glass punches that we're seeing. Is a little bit lower than um, everybody else for some reason. I wonder why. And yeah. it's hard to tell whether SES. these rocks are, like, whether we're in a little bit of a local talus slope or whether these are in yeah. place but have more sediment on them. Like, normally I would say that I think that these are mm. a little bit more like it looks like a talus Got slope. It. it looks like they're not necessarily Roger. attached to the rocks around them. Thanks, Abby. Of course, last time I said that, I was wrong. So, <laughs> when we tried to collect <laughs> one. <laughs> Looking at the bathymetry, it looks like it... The slope kind of levels out slightly here, mm -hmm. so I wouldn't be surprised if there is a little catch from stuff on. Mm -hmm. from Collecting from above. Kind of yep. Above. And we've we've kind of run through a few little gullies like that so far, where we found them more sedimented and a little bit more filled with talus. What is that thing in the middle? This in the almost it's something dead center. Very, yeah, something dead center. Very is it dark? just a rock is that is very dark? Though? Yeah. We can come in. Huh? If you wouldn't yeah. mind, what is that? It is just a rock. I mean, not just a rock. Rocks are delightful. Yeah. But this one seems to have a little bit more of like that reddish cast that we sometimes yeah. see. But it doesn't look like the rocks around it, which is very odd. It also has uh, hermit some crab. delightful biology on yeah, it. Yeah, it has a, a hermit, hermit crab. crab. It's got there, a brittle star. Brittle star. Some hydrozoa like ones, I think. And also well, an hydrocoral. Yeah. 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 It does look like it I'm has a darker crust. Yeah. Or, and yeah, a more reddish in, crust than yeah. some of the rocks around it. I wonder if yeah, it looks different. It is a stray from above. Sure, I've almost got mm -hmm. my skid down. So you reckon that one would be loose? I don't know. I mean, I, I right. yes, because it doesn't Let's look like in. the rest the of the rest rocks. Of the other one. The same yeah. Texture yeah, yeah, yeah. that's though. true. It doesn't seem quite as um, bumpy like with that. Like as you can see, that manganese crust on the lower left that yeah, we're in right really now. Good yeah, you can see here the brittle star resting on that. That is so cool. That's very nice. It looks like it's just hanging out. Yeah. So is that a filter feeder perch. or is that like a this, this carnivore? Be, or? Yeah, it will be a, It will be mostly a carnivore. So it really is just it, hanging out yeah. looking for its yeah. next meal. Roger that. Thank you so much, Pilot, for zooming in on that rock. Of course. I'm actually trying to find more of the carnivorous sponge that we saw earlier on. Oh, look at that beautiful hermit crab. I don't remember seeing a carnivorous sponge. Were you at lunch when we saw the first hermit crab? Oh, maybe I was. Wow, she missed all the good this, stuff. Yeah, this is my first hermit yeah. crab of video? Live. We did see a hermit crab earlier. I think I hear someone calling you outside the room, Shauna. <laughs> 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 Whenever you leave, the biology comes. Yeah. <laughs> it's 
about as slow as I can go. Constantly, yep. Now we're just... Yeah, it does. It seems like there's a couple of these rocks that are darker nice and have seam. a little bit more of a reddish cast. They're less sedimented. I do wonder if they have they have wandered in from above. Copy that. Roger that. Pilot clear. Backing up. And most likely, pretty much everything we see in our field of view is likely to be basalt. Um, as we've discussed before, while we had been hoping that we might have found a this might have been an area where there was a detachment fault, a low angle normal fault that would have exposed some of the lower mantle rocks. By seeing these eruptive textures, we know that we're looking at um, basalts. And so um, it's still totally awesome. I'm not gonna lie. So do we have any, I know this may be a, a difficult question, but any general ballpark of how old this area is? I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. Um, we probably could backtrack it because we know how fast the Mid-Ocean Ridge in this area is spreading. Getting there. So we should okay. be able think, to Kupa? figure out. Um, this is a uh, slow so spreading clear, ridge, uh, the Middle Atlantic tether. Ridge. So, take. Um, um, so we could probably backtrack it, but uh, just need a little okay. bit of time. Roger yeah. that. It's Again, one of these the uh, young metallogorgias. Take a couple minutes with a beautiful crack pillow yes. behind it. Hit us. <laughs> oh, look right at that. that. Right. Yeah, that oh, actually. Yeah, see? Yeah. Like nine five. Sometimes they're very kind of what like I'm at right now. They're, they're just photogenic. So good pilot. What we need Sounds is a sponge me. sitting on one of the really photogenic pillow basalts. Well, well, then then our life would be the, complete. Yeah. 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 Bridge is over now. Yeah, I'd like a move if you're ready. Yep. Two zero meters. That's it. Joanna's now a pillow basalt expert too. Speed decimal two. We figured it out. Good copy, Bridge. Oh, this is beautiful. It is really interesting to me how many sponges we've seen on this dive and compar comparatively few corals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We've so in terms little. of biodiversity, I've been saying it's low. Maybe that's not the right answer. Maybe it's just it still seems to have a lot of different varieties of sponge, but they're patchy in distribution. Yeah, exactly. Oh look! There's so oh, just so went off the off the oh, field of view. Sorry. But there was a pillow. There actually, there's a couple of them that like you can see where the magma flowed, like the lava flowed through, and then sort of left a crevice behind. It left a an empty hole. Mm -hmm. So you can see the outline of the pillow where oh, it this had one, cooled. Yeah, yep. I see, you there. see that? Yeah, yeah. Isn't that cool? Yeah, it looks like a basalt balloon yep. that broke. And we walked <laughs> through a much larger yep. analog. Is it uh, of the right this. or left one they want to see? On the left, it's beautiful. Thank you. Um, left one. And, uh, Come on in. And it, Take it. This we walked through an analog of this on the uh, on the Azores when we were on Pico. Um, we walked through a massive lava tube, and they're basically created in exactly the same way. How cool is that? It's really cool. Oh, thank you so much. Of course. Fantastic. Thanks for spotting it. Yep. Roger. Copy, thanks. Yeah, and here another glass sponge coming into view. And actually, I don't think this one is a Neoplectella. But I'd oh, be no? More, no, I think I'd be more inclined that this is actually a Regadrella phoenix. We can take the sponge uh -oh, quick. she added yeah. a new can word. We, yes. Can we have a <laughs> snap? On the I, I was yes. under the impression Look that all that. the glass sponges were Euplectella. So no, now I have learned something no. new. So, yeah, it's and I, so I really think. Up. Never so Stand simple. By. There we are. Oh, and this one actually has it's the shrimp inside. Yeah, something this inside one has it. the shrimp inside. Now, so that's actually interesting Stand to by. see because um, then it seems that the Oplectella subrea has the scale worms Coffee. and this Regadrella has the shrimp inside. Centering. But is Look that every that. single one of them or is that just... Yeah, no, I wonder. Uh, wow. Look at that. Roger. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah, are we moving already? We are, but I can... Rotate a Copy. Bit. Wow, we can that see is per really perfectly. cool. Yes. Five degrees. So the euplectelids that you were pointing out before, they look like they had more of like a cross hatch, yes. like texture. This one looks here. like it has more we'll of a circular texture to its body. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, look! Oh, there there's two? The, the two of them. Oh, oh my goodness! Look at that. There's your your what was it? The shrimps pair, in love. The, yeah, shrimps in love. <laughs> Trying to use my third here as best I can. Shrimps in love forever, trapped inside a sponge. 
Wow, look at that. That's an amazing view. That is really cool. I wouldn't mind living inside a sponge like this if I was a shrimp. Look at that. It's a beautiful glass condo. That's true. 360 degree view. I would say light and bright, <laughs> except there's no natural light down here. Yeah. Right now it is. All right. That's true. Very light and bright right now. A few more seconds and we can move on. Beautiful. Oh, look at that. Roger that. Oh, oh sorry. Beautiful. I nice thought the rock. Thank you. Safe was place I was to hoping live. for a smoother shot than that. Sorry, buddy. Yeah. That was beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. That was such a cool little, yeah, little sponge. Yeah, that was amazing. Our pilot, and then, yeah, I came five degrees. Roger. So as you come center, I'll Let me ease your mind a little bit. Then. Yep. Yeah, we're good. So we're just oh, continuing to move up our... Um, Coming up and over. What turns out to be basically basalt pillow Roger. rubble wall yeah. and some massive basalts too. There's a couple places where we just see some angular blocky basalt. And we see a lot of these aplosclerid sponges here. Um, so I'm wondering at some point ahead, we may actually collect one of these um, to be 100% sure of what they are. 14, which which sponge did yeah, you want these, these tubular ones, the these, tub aplos uh, yeah, these tub tubular aplos clarids that we're okay. seeing here. Because we see actually quite a number Looks of like them. Like an iron lotus back there. Mm -hmm. I was wondering that, yeah. I've been saving some bio boxes for corals, but they don't see, doesn't seem like there are many. So. Oh, I've been saving <laughs> the bio boxes for more rocks. I don't know no. what you're talking about. Forbidden <laughs> coral. <laughs> yeah, I keep wondering if there's going to be a depth range where it just switches. It's yeah, yeah. yeah. Back to 9.5 degrees, it looks like. 0.95. Yeah. Looks good. Yeah, for sponges at least, usually at around 1,500 meters, there is a, a, a shift in the community composition. Of course, this depends a lot on the area, but typically... Um, what we're seeing here is the typical uh, right, I'm all already set um, back up lower BTL communities. Okay, so maybe towards the end of the dive, maybe we're getting yeah. into that range. Yeah, and we're getting some support here also in the chat room regarding collecting um, one of these tubular aposclerid sponges. So I think when we have an opportunity. And we see one, I think it will be probably a bit brittle, so we might uh, want to actually slurp it. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, interesting. I think those ones will probably be a bit more brittle. Roger that. I wonder if it also might be time to collect another rock. <laughs> when we have a chance. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Maybe rock with a sponge? With a rock with a sponge on it. If we find I feel one. like that would be very hard to slurp. <laughs> oh, but if we find the rock with a sponge on top, we can just collect the rock and the sponge will. one right off screen, Mark. See that? I see where you're going that with that, guy. Joanna. <laughs> yeah. Is that that rock? I see you trying used? to usurp my rock sample. Grab the rock. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's the sponge I was looking for. But we can go for a zoom here. Yeah, watch leads. Feel free to call it out if you see okay. a good specimen. Okay. Are we in a good place to sample right now? I think the yeah. ship has stopped. And okay. It's probably pretty good. Probably yeah. pretty good. Ooh. That's a different sponge. That yeah, that's sediment. another sponge. What kind of sponge is that? that left, this though. also looks like a glass sponge. A that does not look like it's on a rock we can get. I'm just going to say it out no. loud. That looks a little cemented, unfortunately. Yeah, that mm. looks nicely cemented. Oh, that is a beautiful sponge, though. It is. It's pretty. Wow. I'm not sure if this could be a conolasma. It looks uh, early stage. Oops, yeah, probably Stand not, by. but it is definitely a glass so sponge. It is a glass yeah. sponge yeah. as well. Yeah. yeah. And you can okay. see this stuff, the spicules yeah. uh, at the base, and it's anchoring itself to the substrate there. So are the is the are the spicules sedimented? Is that why they look like they're a different color than the rest of the sponge? Yeah, I think it just has sediment okay. on that on it. And you can see actually here also yeah, on the surface of the sponge. On it. Yeah, beautiful. So. You can again see that manganese coating so. on all of these rocks, so. which does sort of speak to probably yeah. age okay. as well. So this is one of those species that has these anchor spicules, um, and they're called the, this type of these species that have this uh, mode of attachment to the to the substrate are called are called lophophytos. And then there are others that we've seen earlier, like the Sacrocalyx pedunculatus, had like a basal on. disc, um, and Roger, that is basifitos. I will not remember any of these things. And then there are some that have the the roots, um, and those would be the rhizophytos. Sponges. So three rhizomes, main like roots. Yeah, exactly. Yep. So three main types of attachment to the, um, to, the, um, to the substrate. 
Oh, look at this. So many rocks to choose from. And so many Some sponges. of which might actually come <laughs> off the ground. <laughs> Is that the uh, sponge there? That's not the sponge you want, the right? No. The sponges are um, That's those not that the are a bit more tubular and very bright white. Roger. Some of these may actually be juveniles of that. Um, well, then we could try to grab a rock. Oh, look, I think there are actually a, n a number of those sponges coming into view to the left there. Those are the ones you're interested in yeah, collecting? I think so. And those are little Maybe. enough that they might be on a rock we might be able yeah, to sample. Let's, let's get a bit closer and we'll Imagine see. Imagine if we can get two for one. Perfect. Mm -hmm. This sounds like a great partnership, Deb. <laughs> <laughs> so assuming any of these rocks want to come off the seafloor and hang out with us. It's not looking super promising. At yeah, the no. You want to do just a 10 meter hop, keep it going? Sure. That way, if you want to sample, it still gives you space, but. Sure. Does it sound good? Sounds good to Zero me. 095? That still looks good to me, yeah. Let great, me this is already now. Yeah, they can move if you're ready. Okay, it's 10 meters, one zero meters, bearing zero nine five degrees, speed decimal two. Good copy, Bridge, thanks. Watch lead, are there any of these ones you want to try, or do we want to move uphill? And any of these look good, although many of them look kind of big, but so yeah. whatever would work here would be great. Okay. Do you think they will be loose? Maybe the bottom left corner. Those look like they might be more loose. Mm -hmm. I feel like this area is where we have the best shot of finding a loose one. Yeah, right here. Mm -hmm. What about that one that's kind of near the center? Specifically the want one with one? the sponge? Or? <laughs> Not the um, off to the right of I the I think the sponge was, a, if we could get it, it would be great, but I, it doesn't Bonus. necessarily seem... Exactly. Roger. Although, what's that guy that's coming into view on the left side that sort of... Yeah, left center there, almost. Yeah. Like. Is that a rock? It even looks like that. That does not look like a rock. No, I do not know what it is. You can take a quick zoom here, video. Uh, right there. Yeah, that's oh. nope. That's a manganese encrusted something, but oh, it is wow. not a rock, and it is no. not helpful as a geology sample. No. <laughs> what about above it though, to the, just to like eleven o'clock of that one? A rock up here. That has the sponge sitting on it. Is that oh. the sponge you would be interested in, Joanna? Oh yeah, it actually looks like the sponge we were looking for. You mean this one? There are a lot of sponges. We can try to give way. it a poke and see if the rock is loose. Yeah, let's yeah. try that. Okay. I feel like we're here? not going to have any problem collecting so, yeah. a, a okay. sponge. Right, I go a little rock off the poking. edge, but <laughs> can adjust. This would be. Okay. So this would be Wait. number five. And which I rock box is open? The port side. Port side's open. Copy. I don't have a five. If it's a sponge, though, is that a sort of a bio? Yeah, yeah. yeah this would rock. be sample yeah, number five. Yeah, this is sample number five. It would be a geo sample if we're going to try to pick up the rock. Yeah. But we may want to put it in a bio box if um, if it, we do get one that has a sponge on it. Roger that. Starboard yeah. bio boxes are open. Starboard bios, copy. Or port rock box. Okay. I see what you're doing I guess doing let's give there. it a poke first and we'll see. <laughs> Damn it, she figured it out. <laughs> Looks like hydraulics are spun up. Go ahead, Bridge. And if we could take Move the camera, the Mini Zeus. <laughs> yeah. I see what you're doing there. Thank you. Arm coming on. I was trying to protect Three, two, your sponge, one. Joanna. I know. <laughs> Copy. But it's ready for heading change? About the apron? So. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Sure. Yeah, Bridge, uh, we're go for heading change. Thanks, Bridge. Center your camera up. I'm not sure which is it on the lower rock or the upper rock there. That's a good question. Upper? Oh, it's on that rock. Uh, yeah. I don't think yeah. it's on that rock. Oh, yes, it is. It is. It oh, is. oh, yes. That's perfect. It's, it's Look perfect. at that. It's perfect. Okay. Uh, do we want to stick it in the bio or the rock then? I do think we'd want to stick yeah. it in the bio the box bio. if we could. Roger. Yeah. Try to leave the biology alone as I grab this. Yeah, go first three right now. So. Coffee. Awesome. So we are going to call this a geo sample. Yes. But it will have a delightful sponge associate on it. Can we get the fogs on. Take a look at it. Let's do that. So, uh, okay. There we it? are.
Oh, look at that. Huh. It's got a layer of mucus on it or something. Or I can already see just from this that it has a different ectosomal skeleton from the clonosomal skeleton because you see like sort of a... The slime? A, not a slime, it's a skin. <laughs> <laughs> Does this it's look so like a good specimen here? Watch these. Yes. Thank Excellent. you so much. Thank that was you. fantastic. Of course. You All just right, made the science leads happy. Uh, <laughs> at your <laughs> discretion, we can move out there. Just need to figure out where it's going to go. Yeah, I'll come off stick. So what do you select here? And we have either of those open, it looks Algebra. like. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe we'll put it in the small one. In case we find a larger sample. Okay, that's all the way out. Copy. Let me know if you want to camera moves. Copy that. Yeah, if you could turn to the right a little bit, then yeah, it'd be great. Try to set it in there so we don't all stopped. Hurt the sponge, Go copy. Got that. Thanks, Bridge. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to release the claw, so I'm going to set it in like this. Yeah, it looks like good. Oh. There we are. I'd just drop it right in, but yeah. It'll hit the little step, yeah. yeah. Starboard inner. Track clear. Now. Perfect. Thank you. Thank no you problem. so much. All right, collect. I tilt the camera up awesome. just a hair. Roger. Back. Great. Can learn Over a little there. bit more about the geology and have a extra sponge. So now that we're done with sampling that, Joanna, Plastic. you need to tell us about the difference between the, would you say the ectoskeleton Scaring and on. the ectosomal and quanosomal skeleton? Which means what? Yeah, so the ectosome yeah. is like the, yeah, the external layer. Off. Of the sponge, Don't move. Uh, and sometimes the sponge will have um, be quicker than that. a differentiated oh, skeleton at that, that in that part of the so in, in, at the external up. layer mm -hmm. that is different from the quanosomal, which is the inner part. So can, the I don't know if you killed the fogs yet. You can That's do that. in all the inside of the sponge. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and look at Fog that. Lights yeah. are off. Bingo. Yeah. Thanks, go by that. And Nev. There's another one of those weird-looking pointy sponges off to the left. Yes, oh, maybe a polymastia. Yeah. yeah. Uh, We've seen that earlier on. Mm -hmm. in the we up saw there it or a couple times now. Yeah. The, uh, oh. the middle guy right there. And we have there a weep coral uh, again. Come on. Do we? At your discretion. Oh, oh. actually, yeah. Uh, is it a hot, not a hot durian, is it? No, oh, that's a sponge, or, I yeah, think. That's the, that's the urchin sponge. P so. Or punk sponge. It does <laughs> look like a punk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can go full. So you can see very clearly here the papillae of the sponge. So some of these projections will have an opening at the tip, others will not. So some will be the inhalant papillae and the others will be the exhalant papillae. So where the water um, enters the sponge and through which the water exits the sponge, respectively. Copy. Very nice punk sponge. Lifting off slowly. Punk sponge. I love it. Um, Nav, would we be in in position to take a water sample, actually? Yes. Yeah? Absolutely. That would be great. Hydraulics are on. Characterize the slope over yeah, here. Yeah, thumbs up from clipping. Wow, look at that. Valve packs are on. Jeez. I am resetting. Wow. The Roger. All right, Nav. And you're ready. Clipping's ready. Ready for this? I'm ready to six. drop a target. Firing. Six. Bottle Sample number two. Six is water. Three, two, one. Fire, fire, fire. <laughs> Bottle number two fired. Good close. All right. Resetting. Valve packs off. Hydraulics are down. HP off. Nice sample. Sample six. Water. Thank you. All right.
and we're also not seeing so many fish anymore. No, that's true. We yeah, didn't see a whole lot to begin no, with, to no. be honest. Just a few. Uh, Evidently, not a huge fan of the cane no. fracture zone. No. You can see some more of the radial cooling around where the pillows were, and you can see some. This is very much fractured but intact, this ridge. It's really interesting getting oh, like this pearl. higher up view. Mm -hmm. Did you want to look at this coil? Yes, please. The one bottom screen? Yeah. Coming down video, you Same can take it when you're ready. Same uh, the view on D2, the view on Sirius from the Even camera too. Even on D2, too. just being... Yeah. Being zoomed out a little bit, you get a better perspective of what it actually looks like. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that's a whip coral? Yeah, that's a black coral, probably a stichopathus. Sure. Yeah. It's a bit more orangey than the one we saw yeah. earlier on in the, um, in the dive. And we can see here very clearly the, the, the reason why it's called a black coral. And this actually makes me think, so if you see those other sticks, I uh, agree. that I think it's all the same, right? I had the same thought. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Same so you think that that yep. is all so black coral that we've so been seeing? So I do think that Sitting what we've been seeing laying across the seafloor, uh, the sediment, these black sticks are actually black coral um, skeletons. There we are. We so it seems down. that perhaps in the past there were more oh, black corals living here bit. in this area. Stand by. Apologies. Oh, look at that. Is there really always beautiful. that piece of the bottom of the black coral that is black? Well, the entire uh, black coral, so the central so axis that, is will that part be, is yes. dead then? Or it's no, not no, dead, it's not, but it's it doesn't not have that. polyps? It just, it just doesn't have All the right. li living tissue. Living tissue. Co yeah, covering it. A it. Shot, yeah. yeah, perfect. Yeah. Roger. And you can see it's attached to the to the rock. Like yep. It looks like it's a, a disc attaching it to the, to the rock there. Oh, that is really cool. Yeah. Yeah, now I can see what you're talking about. I'm not Coffee. sure if this is like a common species um, or if it is indeed actually still. Look at this beautiful oh, view. Oh, so pretty. Wow. Lovely. And so black corals are also known to be very long lived. Um, some species, some spe some individuals have been dated over a thousand years. Of oh age. wow, really? Yeah, actually, I think there is one from the Azores that was dated over two thousand three hundred years. Wow. How so how do you date? That, there you go. That's what I was going to ask, Sam. <laughs> how do you date a coral? Um, well, I think they do radiocarbon on the skeleton, so they uh, would make cross sections on that uh, on that uh, skeleton, which is a proteinaceous. Uh, um, um, material um, and I think they down. do radiocarbon dating on those wow you see, right? it's actually quite a large one as well Roger beautiful pulling back as well So we're continuing yeah, on our shot. very way up slope. Mm -hmm. Oh, a little prop wash to see us off. All right, coming up, Copilot. Yeah, copy that. <laughs> copy that. Are we currently moving, Nev? I'm all. Oh, we're all I feel like I'm seeing yeah. more sponges than we've seen before. Yeah, it looks they're like a higher a quantity of sponges. Yeah, it, it seems like they're becoming a little bit more common now here. Ooh. That looks and nice. That is an Iridigorgia. Oh, I love those. Let's uh, frame that's it with a black background one, yes. here for a second. So that's also a black coral. Roger that. Let me try to put a Look scoop down over here. Look at its curly stalk. Yeah. 
They're beautiful. This is what we call deep sea fireworks. Yeah, yeah these are my favorite. Fireworks. Yeah, it really looks like a fireworks. I think this might look nice. Copy that. All right, I have a foot down. You can come on in video. Oh, nice. Wow, look at that. All beautifully coiled. This is, and then with those um, branches towards the outside of the coil, mm -hmm. and then with all of the polyps distributed, very regularly distributed along those branches. Yeah. Beautiful view. Yes, yeah, so I'm being corrected here in the chat Roger room. That. Very, very rightfully so. Uh, this is a golden coral, not a black coral. This and one actually or the we one can this, it? No, this one. This Are one. you sure? I think so. Okay. So this is Iridogorgia. Yeah, golden, Iridogorgia. A golden, a golden, golden coral. coral. Golden coral. And actually, if you okay. look at the yeah, central yeah. axis, it is rather golden. Mm -hmm. I don't know if which species Copy. this would be. I know one species called Iridogorgia magna spiralis. I simply know wow, the Iridogorgia are the ones with wow. the, the curly stalk beautiful. and then look like a firework at the end. Very pretty. Very, very pretty. Yeah, I'll try to lift so off. So it does and seem that slowly but steadily we're it. seeing a few right, different species off. now of corals. Mm -hmm. uh, slid off the rock again. <laughs> Thank you, pilots. It was beautiful. Amazing. That's right. Look at that. Oh, the question is, what's behind it? Copy that. Oh, another one. <laughs> Do you want to rack focus, or should I just go over to it? Roger that. I'll just come around it then. Yeah, it's a little ways off yet. Has Hypec right always had the taskbar? And we're hearing here also in the chat um, room that the, you know I mean? the black oh, hole that we don't. saw just tried to not um, have a, a few minutes here. ago yeah. may be actually a funny Stichopathus. So not Stichopathus, but probably a related yeah, genus. Thanks, sir. You want to move or you want to wait for a second? I'm going to check out these corals, but oh, we could probably get a move after that. One. Okay. Looks like this might be D2's picking something. 40 meters out. Both sonar, I believe, mm. you can see that. Yeah. It's over that's there, but I guess that's yeah. not quite Another where we're one. heading. Well, these golden corals. Yeah, it's kind of rough Smaller to one. Heading. Might be a little bit of a drop If you off see a good shot here, video, let me know. And you can see that's this really um, dense disc they're in, attaching like. to the substrate. Base. Roger that. So it's I'll interesting it because some here. sponges also have that sort of attachment. So very mm -hmm. similar. Interesting. Good yeah. stable here. You can take it. What is that curled up right next to it? I think it's a brittle star. It's curled up on the, onto up something. Yeah, on, onto something, but I'm not sure what it is. Like it's giving itself a hug. Yeah. Roger that. A rock lover. <laughs> <laughs> She's just hugging to a rock. <laughs> Why wouldn't you hug a rock? Oh, and, and we have a shrimp there. Oh, cool. Living on the Rido, on the Desirido Gorgia. Beautiful shot, Brian. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I wonder if it's actually carrying eggs there. Let me know if you want me There's to center it more. Very orangey. It does look like it. Yeah. Yeah, that's kind of what I was going for. Yeah. So what part it's very, of the yeah, that are we looking at right now? The abdomen. So if you look at the abdomen, that very pink, dark pink. Mm -hmm. There we are. It's a little structures better. there look, uh, it looks like there it's carrying eggs. Oh. It's beautiful. Fantastic. Roger.
Roger that. Very pretty. And I think there's a different coral there on the background uh, to the um, upper right. Roger that. Corals. I don't know, it, it looks a bit different actually. Copy that. It Did we put that move in already now? Uh, no, not yet. Oh, okay. No I'm just going to check this guy out and then I think right we can now, be on our so way. So my success rate is 95% or 20. No success. <laughs> <laughs> Probably go ahead and do what you think. And I'm, and I'm not, yeah, and I'm not much right. better really. Corals are definitely not my okay. expertise. So I think 20 we'll keep trying though. Still yeah. 95 degrees looks pretty good. 20 20 meters there so zero yeah, so this is not an hydro coral. Let me get it from the side a little bit. Might be a better profile. Oh yeah, we're getting actually here an ID from Iris, is and she yeah. knows what she's talking yeah, about. Yeah, so uh, Apparently this is a coralium. Zero nine five degrees. Speed decimal two, please. We've actually seen some, but they were emi coralium. We saw them on the second, our second dive. Good copy, thanks, Rich. Uh, All right, so maybe this here. is a um, closely related one. Are any of these coral species considered like commercially um, of interest or? Well, precious corals have been that and really are, cool. and like there a lot of them are actually yeah, protected. Yeah, yeah, I wonder actually if this coral is just that. It doesn't look like there's living tissue there. Uh, looks like a skeleton only. Yeah, it really looks like it's just a skeleton. So what's the stuff that's not brittle stars? So that's the uh, the coral. No, like oh no, like sorry. Or is that just? Oh sediment? no, that, that looks like mucus. Some mucus yeah, threads. Yeah, oh my yeah, favorite mucus, mucus threads. Yeah. There we are. Can't have a dive without talking about <laughs> mucus. <laughs> oh, actually, it is. Is it you're saying now that it's actually a uh, an allopsami. It looks like the skeleton of an allopsami, so an octocoral. It's Roger that. a coral. Okay. Roger. It's Claritinian and all of that is the yeah. skeleton of it. Yeah. Not, there's no living yeah, tissue it's, on it. It's the skeleton. Mm -hmm. Excellent. And if I'm not wrong, I think this in Alopsamia, if it is the in Alopsamia rostrata, when it's leaving, Roger it's actually that. very bright yellow. Oh. So it Those has the beautiful. tissue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Lifting off. Me too. So we're continuing upwards, and now we're sort of on just a big face of basalt rock. Every so often you see a pillow that protruded out, extruded out actually, and you're seeing mm -hmm. sort of the leftover fragment of um, what's left when the Looks rest like is rolled down. Looks like this is the, the edge slope. of the feature we see on the blue view here. Yeah, and then something right out there is picked up. And we have out. there another Eudogorgium. Copy that. Mm -hmm. And we're slowly just making our way high, maybe. up the slope. We're climbing a I ridge. Crab to the edge of this and we'll take a peek over. It started out as a yeah. fairly sedimented plain almost that was covered in pteropod shells. And then we finally acquired the wall. Yeah, a little and bit then of a drop, as we've been like you said. Up, it's just a whole lot of basalt. It's beautiful. We have a lot of radial fractures, which are cooling structures. Um, that you see actually right in view right now up to the left of the sponge. Um, <laughs> and then we see a lot of these glass sponges, right? Yeah. You've seen a lot of the rock sponges. Mm. And oh, look at that. Beautiful. And that's an Aridogorgia, right? Another, yes. Another one of these golden corals. Gorgeous. So we're starting to see a little bit more quantity mm. of biology as well as yeah. quality, which has been high since the beginning. Yeah. Copy that. At least corals have started to show up a bit more now. <laughs> which makes me really curious to see what we're going to find as we are s relatively shallower. The last move was this mm. 0 Probably 9 as well. We should Copy. try to keep moving up slope yeah. it up. Reasonable pace, place. not yep. not staring at every single thing we see, even though it's exciting. <laughs> I know I'm the worst offender. I'm like, ooh, look at that. Go ahead, Rich. <laughs> it's beautiful. We should stop. 
but instead we can say, look, it's an Aritagorgia, and perhaps move on. And the Metallogorgia there on the background as well, in the lower right. That is the one. Is that the bright the, yellow one? The bright yellow one. So that one is actually leaving. Um, I see that there is some back and forth here also in the chat room between Enalopsamia and Solenosmilia. Don't want to get too far yeah. ahead of you around this yeah. feature here. But that this might actually yeah. be the same thing. I think I have a little more to go. Maybe uh, the think. color will give some more to move. Yeah. Do you want 20 more meters? Your blue view is looking out. Yeah. 50 meters easy. Yeah, so Go for now it. it seems that this one would be uh, an Alopsamia. Roger that. You want 20 more? 20i. 20 9, 5 degrees. Still looks good. Yep. So, yeah, so it's very interesting that slowly yeah, if you but steadily come on we're in while we're seeing different that move. coral species. Over now. More of them. You guys ready for a move? All right, same as last. Just kind of two what zero we were expecting. 0, 9, yeah. 5 degrees. True. Speed decimal 2. Oh, look at that. Very pretty. So, yes, very living. <laughs> Very living. <laughs> no brittle stars. Bridge. No, there's actually... W no, you're right. Yep. There's a crinoid, I think, at uh, one of its tips there. Oh, yeah. It's so dark, yes. I barely even saw oh, it. Oh, I yeah. didn't see that. Yeah. Yeah. Good eye. Oh, look at that. That is beautiful. Yeah, and you see there at the base the... Looks like neon green. So the skeleton, the skeleton yeah. does not have that, uh, so that living with, with tissue. Color, I don't mm -hmm. really see polyps. Am I just not seeing them? Or are they yeah, I closed? Think or they might be retracted. So you see there the the, um, the, the calluses there. there. Yeah. Yes. And the I, they, made, they made the, t the living tissue made there be retracted. So we don't see them, at least not from this side. It also seems that they're all pointing towards um, yeah. that direction. Ship's moving, pilots. Copy. Oh, it does look like there might be a couple of brittle stars in the back. You mean there? Yeah. Oh, yeah, maybe. To the left? Right. Roger. Copy. I'll just mention when we zoom back off of this coral, I think there was an almost intact pillow up to the upper left. Roger that. Did you want to see by the base or behind? The Copy. Very good. Yeah, we're still mm -hmm. a little far away. I think the ship's moving, though. Oh yeah, we're moving. Still some time though. Roger. I'll finish the shot and push so forward. Roger. Keep slipping off those rocks. I'll get it one of these days, Brian. <laughs> yeah. Do we want any more looks at this, or should we push on? That's okay. Thank you, Copy, Violent. Thanks. Yep. And see up in that top left-hand corner, see what Oh, like that is a huge, pillow, yeah. With just a big crack right down the middle of it. Mm-hmm. Coming up. Just like a little pillow ridge. Copy that. My camera's at four or five degrees. Copy. This one's so oh. fragmented. Is it another mm. No. No, Pilot, can we zoom, have a snap zoom on top of that pillow lava? Oh, on top of the pillow yeah. lava? Yeah. That uh, looks like a coralimorph. morph. Come on in. Yes. Oh, that is it does I look like. Oh, what is that? Very pretty. So next to the sponge, uh, this is a coralimorpharia, I think. Let me look this up very quickly. Let me know when we need to move. Copy that. Copy that. Give a little more time.
Yeah, look at those tentacles no, there. Yes, so and I think it is. Oh, okay. Okay. But this is actually a hydrozoan. We hadn't seen this before. The yeah. Uh, yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Okay, we'll information. Find out later. Yeah. Cori Morpha yeah. is what. Cori Morpha is what. Um, Very pretty. The chat room, what Asako is saying. Oh yeah, Cori Morpha, exactly. So not Corali Morpha, yeah, but true. Cori Morpha. Oh. That that was my oh. mistake. Oh. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's say ten more seconds. Roger. And it's time to go. Copy that. That was a better liftoff. Once he loved too much there. <laughs> <laughs> nice zoom work. Pushing forward. Got to be that. I'll follow you. All right. I think we're on the move. Yeah. But okay. So, what's the what's what what are we passing there on the right? Ship we, just stopped. Metallogorgia? Is it a Metallogorgia? Yeah, That's what I was yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. Move just finished. A little bit of swing. Copy. Just following you up now. Copy that. Now, these rocks are looking a lot less, at least from here, and of course we'd have to zoom in to see, but they do look like there's less manganese crust cool, on them than the ones yeah. we saw previously. So as we've been moving up, we're looking at rocks right, that don't look like they're quite as heavily degrees. encrusted with manganese. And you're looking at it, they're, they're not quite as dark and not quite as bumpy. Not quite as bumpy. Room. Yeah, it's really the bumpiness. And we're seeing some intact pillows. Just oh, I just a love peak. a nice pillow basalt. Mm. That's <laughs> really neat. Ridge feature here. Doesn't everyone love a nice pillow basalt? I love a nice pillow basalt. You're starting to. Sure. Yeah, they're <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> we will convert you yet. You will also enjoy the joys of a beautiful pillow basalt. Look at those. Interesting coloration. Mm -hmm. Fracture zones are where rocks come alive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. How do we feel about this look in our blue view? Do we want to push forward some more? Uh, yeah, another 20 meters. Just keep going forward. Ride this ridge. Looks like it might curve a little bit to uh, port, but we're starboard. Copy that. There's that coloration. Might try to have a peek at that. Yeah, what is that? And I don't know. Yeah. I cannot tell from here. Yeah, from a distance, I would say encrusting sponge, Still but I'm not sure. Away, but you're welcome to come on in. <laughs> That's going to yeah, be my gonna, new uh, guess for everything. I was about to say. Yeah. Pile, you good with that? What yeah, is that? Let's go for Closer. it. Nine five, so looks good. Ahead. I don't know what that is. And then after that, we might reevaluate heading. I'm waiting for the, geolo the biologist to jump in Runner. and tell me Bridges what that is. Now. I'm going to guess encrusting sponge. It's an encrusting sponge. <laughs> yeah, oh, and oh, and actually those filaments that we're seeing just uh, same as last just two, in front of it, those are the carnivorous sponges. Zero, nine, oh. Speed doesn't clatterize it. Yes. So can we slurp them? <laughs> Good copy. Thank you, Bridge. That would be great because there's actually several of them. And sometimes they're really difficult to spot. So you see these filaments yeah. there? Yeah. These white filaments? Those are yes. carnivorous sponges? So those are carnivorous oh, wow. sponges. How do you know? I, I mean, never think that. Yeah, because we've, I, I mean, we've already collected some of these too? different different species. Yes, so all of those, and you see, they have like are the they central. Are they all different types? Mm -hmm. So these are probably all of the same the same species. Okay. Um, they look very feathery. I wonder if actually these are Eukely pluma. It's one of the genus, um, and you see exactly they are very fe feathery. So you see that central axis, and you see a lot of filaments yeah. running from that central axis, and those filaments will be covered in a, sp a specific type of spicule that looks like little um, hooks. And that's what actually will um, um, ensnare prey. So oh. any small crustaceans that go by will become entangled on those filaments. And then the sponge will mobilize cells to um, envelop this prey and then just digest it. So this was um, an adaptation. So it's an entire family called Cladorizida. Um, that has evolved okay, this um, feeding Copy. mode, which really challenges the uh, entire yeah, definition yeah. of the phylum Porifera because uh, all, all other sponges are known to be filter feeders. 
Hmm. So this seems to be an adaptation to food poor environments. Um, we sure. think it has evolved only once We're in the evolutionary sure history of the group. Let's copy, let's go for it. This is probably just a some dead, dead? yeah, dead glass sponge. I'm getting a really good. Ones there. I can identify a dead glass sponge. That, it there we go. Because it looks more <laughs> like a rock. <laughs> <laughs> we crack ourselves up. This is um, so fun. Pilot, can we try to slurp in some of those carnivorous sponges that are just? Um, we'll stop it. I think right we ahead. can. With watch, Lydia, we're just a little far mm -hmm. away, but keep it okay. Going. Keep it going. Once okay. we move a little closer. They want, Thank right? you. Yeah. Yes. They're uh, they're on the encrusting sponge, is that correct? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so they are those uh, thin filaments that are sticking out of the encrusting sponge and that rock. Roger that. Have we done any surf samples yet Do today? We no, closer? we have not. Yeah, so I'll, I'll move forward and we'll First see. First slip of the day. We could probably do an easy stop. Bridge nice is over now. In a nice position. So what first attracted our attention here? actually to that rock was that uh, yellow encrusting sponge, but it proved to be far more interesting. Because we just spot. managed to see the, um, the carnivorous sponge. Yeah. yeah, I mean that one does really stand out, compared considering it's the only thing that has an encrusting they're, sponge like that. Yeah, but they're really difficult to see. Actually, usually these right, uh, so these um, carnivorous sponges. Get a skid down to get the drawer open. You might have to do. Yeah, I might be able to set it down like somewhere over here. So we see several Maybe of those on top filaments. Of this guy. I don't know if that's too close. No. Oh, for the drawer? Yeah. It's a good distance for slurping. Uh, I can't tell. If Let me look down a little bit more. You can try it. Yeah, there are a few of them there. So this would be this will be great. Sit here for a second. I think we're pretty stable. If you want to draw her out, and give it a shot. We can turn on some lights too if it helps. Bogs are on. Valve out. packs are on. All right, extending slow. We just kind of keep okay, quiet here to mm -hmm. let good. the pilots do their let them do their work. Yeah. So we're going for all those little strands sticking off the encrusting sponge. Yes. So if we can get maybe two of those, okay, it would be great. Roger that. All right, I'm gonna come up a hair, put my camera down. We may have they may have to be sort of scraped off from sure. the from the rock with the tip of the of the um, slurp. Understood. But shouldn't shouldn't be very difficult to. It looks like we're settling out here, yeah. Copilot. Thank yeah, you. Let me uh, extend a little more. Stopping there. Yep. I bumped you just a hair, but. Roger that. Let's see if it settles. It's a good spot that it grabbed nozzle. That's what you want. Roger that. I need a little more downward. Let's see. Stand by. I might have overshot a hair. Do you want to push us 10 meters back now? 10 meters back, 270. Yeah. Thanks. Bridge is over now. Yeah, can I get a move backwards? Uh, it'll be 10 meters, 10 meters. Bearing two seven zero degrees speed decimal two. Can't tell. I want to make sure we're on the skid and not the drawer here. It's a good copy bridge. I think we're on the skid. I 
if you want, you could uh, just rise, grab it. We could suck the drawer in, and then you could reacquire that way if it's easier. I know gotcha. it's kind of difficult to see where your toes are when the drawer's out. Yeah. Like I think the toes are touching. But there's a little oscillation, I just want to make sure. Yeah. I'm sliding a little bit. Alright, let's try it one more time. See how that looks. Okay, I think we're good here. Hydraulic spin up. Hydraulics are up. Copy that. If you can just follow me. Over to your arm. Arm coming on. Three, two, one. And we're on suction sample. We're in canister one. Looks like canister one to me. I'll follow you out. I'll Copy. keep an eye on the, uh, the jar. Do you got the suction light on, Sean? It suction jar? Give me 100% on it. 100%. Thanks. Come down. I'll hold there. Copy that. Might need a little more grip force. Go ahead, Bridge. Copy. Thank you. All right, Sean, that 10 meter move is complete on the way back. Copy that, yeah. I think I'm already seeing myself move a hair. Roger. Yeah, that's good. All right, I want to try sliding back just a little bit there. I can come down a little more if I need to. Oh, that looks good. Oh, sliding. Make sure we're stable here. Look okay? Yeah. Do you have a good amount of forward axials on, I noticed? Cool. Yeah. Perfect, thank you. You want me to trim that? It might be if you slip, you'll move pretty quick forward, I think. Yeah. Stand by. Let me try to adjust that. I'll retract the drawer a little more. There you go. Drawer's fully retracted. Try that. Yeah, I did that. A little more comfortable. Yeah. Okay. Let's I'll go. Follow you up with camera. We're just going. Yeah. Let's go for this top guy to start. May need to scrape him a little bit. I will start suctioning now. You ready for it? Ready. It's about a thousand RPM. Let's try to give him a little scrape. I think it's in the nozzle, right? Yeah. Yeah, Mini Zeus has a pretty good view of what's going on. Yeah, you're still probably four inches away. Roger that. Let me keep an eye on that tape if you could, Nav. Sure, you can come on in a little bit. Thanks. Oh, got one. I'm watching the jar. One is in. Nope, it's in the jar. Do we, keep going? Do we want another one watch lead? Yeah, if we can get another one. I think Thank there's you. Okay, maintaining suction. Roger. Still in the jar, looking good. Copy. Go for two. Going for two. Is it in the hole, Sean? Is it in the... I think so. There you go. All right. I think it's in. Just going to scrape it off. Mm. 
All right, I'll give it a little scrape here. Yep. There we are. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Wait for it. There it is. It's in. It's in. Second one's in. Roger. All right, Brilliant. Thank disabled. you, Pilot. No problem. Nice work, Pilot. Thank you. I think this might be actually the first carnivore sponge of the campaign. Two sticks. Jar, oh, yeah. jar one. I'll drop a target. Coming down. Six sample seven. I still need to uh, draw out the advice. Roger that. Try to get you in a good position here. All right. Do we want to try coming out a little bit here? Yeah. Let's come out a little bit and we'll Standing adjust. Slow. Copy. Looking down. Looking real good. Oh, pushing a little bit. It's okay. All right, I'll stop. All right, I can go the rest of the way. Yeah, you're pretty close. Probably let go here, huh? Yeah, I think so. Nice. Clear. Looks good. I'll follow you over. Copy. Pilot, can we just have also a snap zoom on those two sponges in the center? Sure. Stand by. Thank you. Okay, shoulders fully up. Should be. Actually, we have here a little sponge out spot. <laughs> there we are. All right, pilot off stick. Does that look okay? Yeah. Looks a little angled. It's a little angled, but it should uh, float down. Roger that. All right. Go packs off. Thanks, go pilot. And what would you like to zoom on? Watch lead. So on those two spon on those two sponges, central bottom now. Uh, just be just below, just below Roger. the right there. yellow. Yeah. Come on in. Thank you. camera back. Yeah, very interesting. So this, um, the one to the right, um, my guess would be that it's also, Thanks, it's actually a Geodia. The one to the left, the white one is either a small, actually I would be, I would be more inclined to say that this is also, it's a juvenile of this uh, Geodia um, Pachydermata that we've collected earlier. Uh, it seems to have the same sort of surface. Um, of that large specimen that we collected. As for the encrusting sponge, it's, um, you know, as in most encrusting uh, species, it's very difficult to to say exactly what species they may be um, without further examination in the lab. That's great. Thank you, Pilot. No problem. Joanna, what are those like, grayish, yeah. stringy things within the encrusting sponge? Yeah, so those are the, the inner canals uh, where the water flows through. And oh. sometimes you only see those canals because they're thinner um, as they move from the pore areas Thanks and then they start becoming larger and larger as they move towards the osculum right so you, often what you see is that you see an oscule uh, the oscule so where the water exits the sponge mm -hmm. and you'll see around it these star-shaped um, striations which are those canals that are right. a bit Compile, larger and Zero, more four, superficial mm -hmm. as oh, well yeah. in a good spot we're all stopped. We could probably put it, the move back in. 
Yeah, yeah, 10 or 20. More pillow fragments. Take a peek um, we saw one open pillow, a few smaller, more yeah, intact sort of ones. And we're, yeah, blue, again, yeah. slowly continuing our way up this ridge, Not stopping to look at everything sure we see. Looks like you still got the fogs on. Fogs are on. Fogs I'm going to make on. the wild guess that that's a it's coral. A yeah, that's a metallogorgia yeah. again. Metallogorgia. Yeah. So pretty constant slope for the most part. It's beautiful I radial guess cooling. I just want to do one more move uh, forward. Sure. 20 meters and then go from there. Yeah, I think that works. Thanks. And we're Zero nine five. making our way Zero to nine the nine local five. high, which is at about, I think, 1,500 yeah, meters. Good. We're currently at about 1,700 meters. Okay. And then if we can achieve that bridge local high, now. then we'll probably run along the top of the ridge. Yeah, you guys ready for a move? All right, let's do 20 meters, very 095 degrees, speed decimal two. Good copy. Oh, look at these cool pillow structures. Just gonna pan pillow over to the slope here. Corals. How can you get better? Oh, and another one of those sponges that looks like it's a punk rocker, the, the, right? The punk sponge. What's its yeah, name? I, I need to write this down. What's its real name? Not the punk sponge Polymastia. Name. Polymastia. Possibly Polymastia corticata. I think we have someone joining us. Hello. Hello. Okay, bye. He's noticed today that the F bar doesn't really want to talk. Mm -hmm. I noticed is it, that. Is it on your system? Oh. No, it's specific. It's, it's GUI specific. Huh. I've been noticing. I think uh, like once a day, there's always one thing that like doesn't want to pop up. Here's our metallogorgia again. Some bugs in there. Oh, some really nice individuals here. Very long stalks. So maybe this isn't necessarily the super high abundant, you know, biology we expected, but we are starting mm -hmm. to see more of a diversity and we're yep. starting to see more things. Yeah, that's true. This, this yellow encrusting sponge also starts showing off more. Mm -hmm. It's not my favorite. I'm not going to no. lie, Joanna. <laughs> it's not as beautiful as some of the other, as some of the other sponges that, that you have. Looks like the ship has moved. 11 meters. Oh, well, oh, oh yeah. Really nice. 11 now we're starting to see a lot more understood. corals yeah. and sponges. What's that percentage And wise? the rocks, at least from you know a first glance, do more appear to be a little bit understood. Um, less crusted with manganese. Mm -hmm. And many more of these are intact. They're less fractured. You still see a lot of pieces that have broken off, but you're starting to see some the smoother texture of the external part of the pillow basalt. As we get near this local high, it does look like uh, this return becomes more prominent, but it's pretty much north. Copy that. So once we get to the top. We can go for a zoom. Looks like a starfish, right? Ooh, oh, that's our first starfish yes. of the of the dive. <laughs> Come on in. Is that the cushion star? Yeah, it looks like it. Is this what? Is it the sitting on a sponge? It might actually be munching on a sponge. Oh, is it eating a sponge? Yes. So, so actually, Chris Ma has um, has published a paper a couple of years back showing uh, exactly from Okeanos Explorer cruises, mm -hmm. um, showing how uh, a, lo a lot of evidence of s starfish actually eating sponges and some corals as well. So I wonder if this is the Goniastrid sea star that uh, Chris ahead, referred to many times. Move complete. Thank you. 
Oh, Crazy's online. We're going to sit on a rock here, video. It might be a little bump. Lean fast, faster. Lean faster. Lean faster. Great. All right. Thanks, I'm Chris. nestled against a rock here. Yes, Feel free sir. to chime in. Lean faster. And it's eating a sponge, we think. Yes. It really looks like. Well, there were a or lot of sponges other, around. Unless it's resting on it. But, <laughs> but I would be surprised. At didn't 68, I didn't just want to hang out on the sponge for fun. <laughs> Is that good? Very cool. Hello. Greetings. This Hi. Is Chris Ma. Hi, Chris. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Great that you're Hello, joining Joanna. us. Hello. So I'm uh, happy to to be back. I'm glad you guys got in the water. Um, so. Uh, I can tell, thanks to the very nice close-up video, that this uh, this looks very much like plinth aster. Um, so plinth aster is, uh, as you said earlier, a goni asterid. Um, just trying to look at the details because uh, the surface could be smooth or granular. Um, Roger that. In either, either case, if it's granular, if there are little granules on the surface, it might be Peltaster placenta. Um, so uh, either one of these kind of cookie stars or goni asteroids, uh, as I said, as I'd written about it, and you mentioned very thoughtfully, um, they are feeding on sponges. Um, for a long time, we didn't know what they, what they were doing down there. Uh, they were very decorative. Um, mm -hmm. In fact, um, you know, for a long time, you know, I had called them and you called them cookie stars, but Twitter decided that they should be better called ravioli stars and to a mom <laughs> to judge. But what's happening here is that the uh, stomach is being everted out onto the sponge below it. So if we were to tip this over, we would see its stomach extruded. And so it's, um, it's uh, extruding its stomach onto the surface and devouring the tissue and, um, absorbing essentially it's eating it like in place wow. and this process may take a very long time and i mean sea stars are not known to be lightning bolts so um <laughs> but i mean according to like scott france's data of uh well anecdotally admittedly but um of watching you know sea stars feed on that bubblegum coral the same individual animals were on that bubblegum coral for almost a year oh wow so oh. over a year and I'm not saying that this could take a year, but if this was like so perched on this sponge, it feeding it on it yeah. and feeding it down, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if this uh, was, you know, a month long it's endeavor. Go, so. Oh, wow. So, that's um, you know, or even more. Yeah, it's kind of buggy, though. Thanks. Oh, yeah. wow. That's um, really so incredible. So, what we're seeing, too, is also. Oh, yeah. But, and also, what we're seeing is along the radial areas. So, those are the gills, the papular areas. That's where it's respiring. Um, it's in a comfortable place, and typically these sea stars only extend their gills or the papula when they're sort of in a good place. So, because typically there is a concern that they, uh, you know, might be fending off predators or that sort of thing. Gotcha. But this one yeah, looks like it's pretty happy rocks, and it's they? feeding, and you know, and now it's going to be broadcast on television. So I don't see uh, how how much uh, worse it I'm could be. On this rock. Um, but yeah, I think I think just based on my, I'm gonna have to go with Peltaster with this one. I, I I think from a distance it looks like the plates are flat and smooth, but I think as a, we look closely, um, there are granules on the surface, which makes it more Peltaster-like. Um, are there lasers? How large is this? Are we are we lasers on? Lasers on? Yeah. It's about 10 centimeters. Yeah, about 10 centimeters. Maybe a little bit bigger. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Yeah. Oh, wow. So that's a good dinner plate size. Wow. <laughs> oh, wow. That's really nice. Well, I, I literally just walked into my office and so happy that um, I, have yet, I have not yet invoked the Chris Ma curse of starfish is running off into the darkness as soon as I <laughs> show up. So, and we're um, happy to have you. We missed you, Chris. So, uh, well, I'm, I'm happy to hear about the fact that you're back. Um, so, right. so now I ask you, Joanna, on on the, is that yeah. a glass sponge or a Dima sponge? No, that's a Dima sponge. And actually, another question I had for you. So, I'll ah. will I'll will the I'll will the um, 
the starfish actually deal with the sponge spicules? Because that's something that All intrigues right, me. So will it actually munch on the spicules itself, or does it have a mechanism to get rid of the spicules and just keep, you know, the organic matrix, matrix of the sponge? Um, my, um, my impression has always been that they will digest everything okay. and the, sp the spicules get into the gut contents, but then they just, they're simply um, uh, extruded, not extruded, uh, what's the word I'm looking for. They'll just be, uh, 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 yeah, extru extruded. They'll just be, uh -huh. yeah. uh, not pooped out, but they'll just be, they'll, they'll just be released as waste. Um, later on, but we have found sponge spicules in the gut content. Of oh, these you before. have? Okay. So I was very curious. That's sometimes how we know, yeah. Okay, cool. I was very curious um, curious I mean, about that. Roger. Yeah, I don't nice think shot. we've seen... <clears throat> people haven't really done a comprehensive gut survey of a lot of these animals, but um, but like, for example, with the, with the corals, Pushing I know forward. that, you know, we've determined prey items by looking at the um, sclerites found in the uh, gut contents, um, mm -hmm. and you know, and there's always that conservative estimate. Well, maybe yeah, they're feeding on the, the on the you right, know just sediment and just Managed absorbing all of yeah. the ambient biological and, uh, stuff. So. But, yeah, so but I, and, and the same could probably be done yeah. here with the sponges. At least Coming we could up. rule out a few yeah. or narrow down um, to a few families, perhaps. I'll the sponge in which on we'll over on which the so the we'll starfish is predating. That's very cool. Another I agree. Sponge. Yeah, that would be really. I mean, Something to look. <laughs> that would be another creative use for. Yeah. Yeah. I <laughs> know. Oh, no, well, anyway, I'm I'm here and I'll be here for the rest of the day. Um, I'm on chat, but I'll call in if something really nice like that shows up again. Brilliant. Um, it's really a uh, pleasure to hear all of you back. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you, Chris. Oh, and I don't know if I, uh, I realized this was almost a week ago, but uh, you guys caught a really nice image of that uh, little brittle star, um, Astro Ophira, um, on the first day. <laughs> uh, it's a, it looks like a sea star, but it, it's actually a brittle star. And, oh, okay. Um, I, I was tr in transit, uh, oh. and it was really, it was just a great capture, and I'd only seen one in situ before uh, in the Pacific. So, oh. and you know, I just actually saw that specimen at the MCZ, um, I'm sorry, not that specimen, but Nautilus collected one. Uh, mm -hmm. And so I was, I've actually finally been able to sort of examine it. And it looks, it, there's some really, let's just say there's a lot of unexplored diversity down here. So <laughs> anyway, thanks so much. And I'll, I'll let you get back to it. And I'll talk to you again, hopefully soon. Yeah, thank you. Thank, thank you, Chris. Chris. Thanks for joining us. Go ahead, Bridge. Well, that was wonderful. Uh, it was I'll, I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye. Bye. So cookie star, ravioli star, yeah. or plant well, faster, which is supposed to be. Yeah, but it's it does look like a ravioli, I'm not going to lie. Yeah, and, and it's obviously not eating forward. cookies. No. <laughs> I don't think Ships sponge eating away. star is quite <laughs> as, <laughs> doesn't Roger. roll off Roger the that. tongue quite the Cameras same four, as ravioli star so or cookie star. Center. Copy. I'm doing about 20 up right now. Are going to a big? Yeah. Come on. Oh yeah, and Shirley is here, man, mentioning on the, in the chat room so much for physical defense, referring arms. to the sponge speakers. Yeah, I, was yeah say, that's I thought true. you told me that the sponges were supposed to be, you know, yeah. not a lot preyed on them. But yeah. so well, we knew that uh, some sea stars mm -hmm. and that some turtles so do, uh, do uh, predate turn, on, on sponges. That's some fish as well. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And yeah. sometimes even on the on the ones that have all the nasty chemicals as well, as Shirley is also mentioning here. We need to just get to a certain. Altitude. Watch these. This is Nav. Go ahead, Nav. Uh, the ship asked us to come off bottom. I'm not sure what's going on yet, but uh, we're coming up. Okay. For thanks safety. very much One for letting us know. Thank you. Doing great, Pat. Roger. Maintaining. Extra stowing. Looks good. All right. Those are good. Roger. Hydraulics are off. 